What's happening, everybody? Give me a little bit here. Hang on. Update that. Hope everyone's having an amazing Saturday. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. What's happening, Gloria? What's up, Lulu? How's it going, everybody? Happy Saturday. You guys are on my painting with Jesse Page, and I am Jesse. I'm here a little bit early, as I typically try to, try to do. Just want to say hi to everybody who's going to be joining us today. Of course, we're going to be painting our little Christmas family today. So, anyway, we're going to get started. Whoop, let me lower the volume here so I can get a little feedback over here. We're going to be starting right at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, uh... I'm already seeing some uh, comments in the, some spammers in the comment section. Okay, you guys want to be careful. Do not touch those uh, the links in the comment section. Actually, let me make a quick adjustment to my camera. It looks like I'm a little over to one side. So give me one sec. There we go. Any links that you guys see in the comment section, do not click on those. Clicks are, are sorry, the links that show that the event is, um, being played somewhere else ban from page there we go just ban that guy let me delete the comment all right delete that's right cool so again you want to be careful don't touch any of those links in the comments that you see they're talking about the live event being played they say click on this link or it has a link on there and it shows a picture of the live event as you guys already know for those of you that are familiar with the page the event happens right here on facebook those are spammers that are coming on here trying to get you guys to go to other uh, websites to try to take your money. So just be careful with those, don't click on them. Again, I'm, I'm just going through here really quickly trying to delete them and get them out of here. All right, here we go, delete. Just ban that guy, now he's getting deleted. <laughs> crazy guys, crazy guys. Darkies, how's it going from New Brunswick? How are you, how are you? Cindy Lou, oh no, Cindy Lou. Cindy Lou, you fractured your shoulder, huh? What the heck, sorry to hear that. So you, is it your your painting hand, painting shoulder? Is that is that the one that you fractured? Hopefully not. That means you you have to be sidelined for a little bit. But hope you get better. <clears> hope <throat> you get better soon. That's a bummer, especially around the holidays. No good. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Justina Joslyn Victorino says so psyched for this one. I am too. Yeah, Gloria, boo on those spammers. Anyway, guys. Uh, we're a little early, right? We're just a few minutes out before we actually get officially started. I just want to say uh, hello. Uh, we're going to have a pretty good gr uh, group today, I think. We're already at about 220 devices. I'm uh, expecting probably somewhere in the three to 400 devices. So we have a really nice group. When that happens, though, it's really hard for me to keep up with your comments, <clears throat> especially at the beginning of the feed or the, or the beginning of the session because they go by so quickly. Uh, another spammer. Let's ban that guy. Ban from page. Bam, your band buddy. Now let me delete your your uh, link there. As I see them, I'll, I'll block them. I've also got the wife on here uh, helping out. Her name's Erica, so if you guys can say hi to Erica. She's in here uh, helping me out as admin to the page. So we're just trying to work through here and block these as much as we can. I apologize for having to look down at my computer here, but it's the only way I can see your comments. Eventually, I'll probably have a monitor or something where I can be looking at the camera and seeing your comments at the same time. I don't know if that's possible, but, uh, but you know, one can dream. Anyway, guys, um, I just want to say, uh, yeah, beware of those spammers. There is no place else at the moment that these uh, events with Painting with Jesse happen except for on Facebook. Eventually, they're going to be, they are going to be streamed live to YouTube, maybe some on Instagram, and who knows where else. But as of now, they only happen right here on Facebook. So all you guys have to do is, whoops, I was about to ban somebody, but uh, wasn't able to. What's up, Liliana Reverone? How's it going? Welcome back. I know you were paint, uh, painting last night. You and Gloria were painting last night um, when we did our little um, our little gingerbread house. So for those of you that might have missed it, that gingerbread house is still available. It will be up in the videos under the live section of my main painting with Jesse page. Let me lower my music a bit. 
I feel like it's a little too loud. We'll turn it up in a little bit. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we did the little gingerbread house last night. For those of you that missed it, uh, you can find the recorded version of the video. It's in the live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page here on Facebook, as are all of my um, recorded sessions. Tomorrow, ooh, and I'm missing, I'm missing a painting over here. I didn't put it back up. I moved the one that was right here. Actually, let me go ahead and put something up there. It looks like it's a little bare. We don't want that. A couple of weeks ago, we did... We did a little snowman, okay? A couple of weeks ago, we did this little Christmas snowman. Uh, so this painting is available as a session. Let's see. Yeah, let's put this guy up. How about that? How about that? Or maybe, yeah, that's perfect. That's the one we did a couple of weeks ago. And again, that video is still available for maybe, maybe some of you guys are looking for some fun stuff to do during um, Christmas week, next week. If you're, you know, there's a lot of us that can't go out and do stuff. Right, uh, but maybe you guys want to get together as a family and do some paintings. This one's available to do. Tomorrow we're going to be doing the Skellington Christmas. Okay, so that's uh, our, our Jack and Sally piece over there. That's tomorrow, and then next Wednesday we're going to be doing this guy right here. Okay, the little Charlie Brown Christmas behind me. That's next Wednesday. So if you guys are interested in those events, go over to the uh, event page on Painting with Jesse, and you'll see. That one and this one, all the details for those will be there. And you guys can uh, check out all the, the details, see what you need, and then come join us for some, some more painting fun. Okay, but if you guys are interested in the snowman, that is under the live tab on the main painting with Jesse page. You'll, you'll find that's about three weeks or so ago. Okay, Adrian Vargas, Lily is here from Florida. What's happening, Lily? Debbie Hockett, hi from Alberta, Canada. All kinds of really cool people hanging out with us today. We're gonna have a lot of fun. So let's see who else is on. Ooh, got a bunch of comments that I'm, that I'm missing. Superstar says, Super Yahoo, painting is fun. It sure is. Lisa Suleski says, I want to do Jack Skellington. Tomorrow, Lisa, come join us tomorrow. We'll have some fun with uh, Jack Skellington, okay? So just want to make sure you guys are aware. If you guys haven't yet, yes, there is. This cactus painting behind me is also available on that live tap. This one was way back in April... Uh, May somewhere around there, so you'll have to go back a ways, but that video is available I teach you guys how to draw everything by hand Including the owl that's right here. No, don't know if you guys can see there's a little cool owl Use some neon paints for that. So go to the live tab find the video and then come and do it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, Mary Beth Wallace from st. Peter's Missouri. How's it going? How are you? Welcome. Welcome. I know there's gonna be a bunch of new uh, people here today first timers so welcome to all of you also all of you that have been returning and doing fun stuff with me for a while now i want to welcome you guys back and a special thank you to you guys for continuing to come back that's fantastic kennedy hendrix and navy are back from winnipeg how's it going guys thank you for being here hi from wisconsin shannon johnson hi shannon but uh we're about a minute out as soon as we get going, I'm going to talk about my supplies. Of course, everybody gets to paint with whatever you have, whatever supplies you've got, right? But we'll talk about what I'm going to be using, okay? Uh, Rhea and Heather from Champlain, New York. How's it going? Diane Buchanan says she's a firsty. Hi, Diane. Welcome. Welcome to the page. Thank you for being here. Again, folks, I just want to remind everybody, be careful of any scammers that you see in the comments section. Uh, there are some... Um, some nefarious folks out there that try to lure people away from my page they put links up in the comment section for you to click on to take you to other sites to try to charge you take your credit card information who knows what else so simply stay away from those you'll see them what you'll see is a link that says hey watch the live feed of paint your christmas family here or something along those lines and if you click on it it'll take you somewhere else from what i understand they've been trying to charge people to watch the live feed and i don't even know if they actually Provide the live feed, uh, it's possible. But anyway, there's one right now. If you guys take a look, very last comment from MD Yanis says, paint your Christmas ring, your family virtual step-by-step -step live. That is a scammer. So let me ban him from the page. You're banned, buddy. Now let me see if I can delete this comment. Okay, so anyway, those are the ones that you guys want to be careful of. Okay, now I'm deleting him, so his comment should disappear from the feed. But that's what you'll be seeing, okay? Those are spammers. Stay away from those. Uh, so anyway, all right, guys, it's 11.01, so let's get going. My name is Jesse. You guys are on my Painting with Jesse page 
here on Facebook. I want to welcome all of you guys, and I hope you're all having an, an amazing Saturday. We're going to be having some fun recreating this cool and beautiful, if I do say so myself, paint your reindeer family piece that everybody gets to customize with as many reindeer as you'd like. Let me lower my volume a little bit on my Christmas music. You're going to be able to customize this piece however you'd like, however many reindeer you'd like to add to your piece, okay? So I'm not going to be, te be teaching you guys how to draw the reindeer. For those of you that are participating today, you know that you have some, or at least I think you know, you have some stencils that I sent out either by email or that you downloaded directly from the comment section of the discussion board. These aren't going to come in handy until way later. Okay, so if you don't have them yet, you do have time to download them and print them out, but you also want to get them, get them cut out. This is going to be closer towards the second half of our painting process. So you will need these. Again, I will not be teaching you guys how to draw those today. I typically do teach you a draw, the drawing piece of our art, but today you're going to need those stencils. If you don't have them or if you can't paint today, but would like to come back and paint, you want to get those later, uh, the video will be available for you to watch afterwards. As soon as the live uh, session's over, I press save. It goes directly right to the live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page. So you guys will go there and uh, play, uh, do the playback, do the recorded version where you can pause, jump forward, go backward, all that good stuff. Okay, for especially for those of you that are a little slower painting, uh, maybe or you start to fall behind. Uh, that video is there for you guys, will be there for you guys to watch afterwards, okay? So, all right, let's talk about supplies. I'm going to be painting with acrylic paint as I typically do. Whatever you guys have, whether it's watercolors, maybe some of you guys are doing it in oil paint, um, markers, colored pencils, chalk, whatever it is that you have, that's what you're going to be using. Uh, I'm going to be painting on a, on a 16 by 20 inch canvas, okay? Just like with the originals on, but whatever you guys have as far as that, that's what you'll be using. I always have paper towels handy because messes happen. These also help me clean up the brushes in between steps. Okay, so paper towels. Of course, when we get to the drawing part, we're going to be wanting to use a pencil with an eraser or a chalk, something for you guys to be able to draw with, trace your reindeer with. You're going to be using something like that. Okay, so there's that. And then, of course, the paints that I'm going to be using, the colors, the basic colors on this piece for me are white. I've got some blue in here. I've got some green and I've got some black. So white, blue, I've got a dark blue, uh, kind of a dark blue. Yeah, you'll see, I'll show you, I'll give you guys an up close here in a bit. Dark blue, a green and a black. Okay, so those are the main colors that I'll be using as far as paints. If you guys want to mix things up <clears throat> and make some changes to the piece, feel free to do so. Right, if you want to add other colors to it, etc., etc., that's entirely up to you. Now, the green that I've got is a lighter green. I'm going to be mixing it with some black to make it darker for my dark forest green trees that you see in the background, right, for, the, for those green trees. Um, as far as brushes, you'll get a closer look once we get started, but I do have a few basic brushes here in my, in my cup. I've got a two-inch um, flat brush that I use looks almost like a painter's brush that I'll be using for the background. Uh, some, anything that you've got that's similar to these is perfectly fine. I have a three quarters inch flat brush. These are all synthetic bristle brushes. I've got a little half inch and then I've got a little tiny quarter inch brush and a little tiny liner brush. When I, when I say, when I'm talking about quarter inch, half inch, that's the width of these brushes. And so it gives you a little bit of a visual as to how big your brushes should be. If you're new to acrylic painting, or it's your first time, what you do want to have is a cup with some water in it and your brushes will sit in that the entire time as we paint. If you don't want the acrylic paint to dry on those brushes, it's very important. Otherwise your brushes can get ruined. Okay, the last thing that I've got, two things that I'll be using and they are, uh, I've got some glitter paint right in here. Whoops. Almost dropped that. I've got some glitter paint. It's basically glitter floating around in glue. Okay. Any one of these will work. I've got some green. I've got some crystal. I've got some gold. These are both gold that I'll be using uh, to add to the background, to the trees, to uh, the reindeer, especially 
Um, actually, I've got some blue glitter also. I think I'm, I'm going to be using it to, for one or two of my reindeer. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, glitter is for the very last touch that we add. We layer on top of everything. So if you guys are going to be joining us for that, you'll, you'll want to have some of that. And then I have some a little box of sequins that I moved a little bit ago. Now I don't know where I put it, but I'll, I'll, I'll find that later. These little loose sequins, we use those to add to the trees, okay? So those are basically the supplies. We are going to get started here pretty quickly. Let me see if anybody has any questions. What's up, Lisa Guarino? Welcome back. Lorna, how's it going? How are you? Natalie Johnson says, hi, from Tennessee. This is my fourth time painting with you. Love it. Awesome, Natalie. Thank you for coming back and joining us once again. It is fantastic to see how many of you guys continue to come back. So I really, uh, really do love it. Again, folks, just want to remind everybody, watch out for those spammers in the comment section. They're coming in. Um, pretty strongly here. I see them uh, putting in a bunch of comments already. Looks like they're flooding the, the board again with comments. I'm going to see if we can delete some of these before we get started. But just be careful. Don't click on those. It all happens right here. Okay, so just uh, want to make sure you guys are aware of that. But anyway, let's get going, folks. Let's, let's go ahead and get our setup going. What you guys want to do is you do want to get your paint on a palette i'm using a couple of paper plates here don't mind the mess in the background i'm trying to recycle my plates as much as i can but my basic colors once again just to give you guys a close-up white blue green and black those are the basic colors i'm going to be using you can customize yours as you see fit okay everything on this piece is customizable meaning feel free to change things up make your make it your painting i'm just here to guide you guys a little bit in recreating something similar, but whatever choices you want to make, I love to see what you guys do. Okay, so again, I just want to mention, I am going, going to be painting on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Basically, um, I've got, whoops, let me go ahead and make a little adjustment to my easel here. The same size canvas as I've got on the original is what I'm going to be using here today. Okay, so there's that. Let me let me go ahead and bring my original painting over. Now this is an original by me. Okay, um, let me go ahead and do that. Whoops, almost almost felt like I was gonna drop that uh, that easel. All right, let me go ahead. I'm gonna I'm about to move the camera forward. I want you guys to get a really nice close shot of what it is that we're doing here. You guys are going to be able to see everything up close. Okay, so let me go ahead and make an adjustment here. We are going to get moving pretty quickly. What we're going to be doing first is painting our background. The entire background, we're going to paint everything blue, a dark blue. If, if it is dark blue that you're going to be using for your background. Even though we've got some snow down here at the bottom, the whole thing is going to be blue. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention that you may want to have handy Hopefully you guys all saw this in the uh, in the details section, in the supply section. You want to have a blow dryer handy, hair dryer, one of these guys, okay? I have one in my studio that I'll be using to dry the background so that we can move quickly over to the next step. If you don't have one, don't stress about it too much. Um, but you can, if you'd like, if you know, if you can grab get one, that would be fantastic because it will help you speed things up in between drying stages i won't be using it too much a couple of kind of crucial steps but if you've got one handy like i said go ahead and grab it and get it ready let me scoot up a little bit more all right everybody so it looks like we've got about almost 300 people or 300 devices anywhere on, anywhere on right now so that's a pretty good group so what we're going to do first, and I think I need to pour out more than what I've got on here, is we're going to paint the entire background in this kind of a solid dark blue color. Okay, so let me pour out a little bit more. I think I need more than what I've got on my plate. From top to bottom, I'm going to be using my large two-inch flat brush. But um, if you got, if you don't have that big of a brush, whatever you've got that's kind of similar is what you're going to be using. Okay, let me show you what my brush looks like up close. All right, once again, got my water cup right here. Brush is inside. The, cup, the brush that I'm going to be using for this step is this. 
I've got a pretty large canvas and the larger the brush, the easier it is to cover, um, cover the, the, the background quickly. So I pulled my brush out of the water cup. It's got some water in it. I'm just gonna take a paper towel to squeeze out that extra water. Okay, we wanna take that water out of there. We don't want it dripping as we're painting. Sometimes as we're painting along, if we leave too much water in the brush, it'll actually drip onto our canvas. So I'm just taking some of this paint like this. Okay, I put it over on another plate, separate plate. Just gonna grab this and I can, you can do this in a couple of ways. Whoops, let me go ahead and pull this guy up. We can do it like this. When you brush for this, you can go like this. Do a little crisscross pattern all the way through, or you can do long brush strokes. Okay, if you've got really thick paint that you're using, you might want to add a little bit of water to it and mix it in to help it flow a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through here. Now I'm probably going to do two layers of this blue to make it really nice and dark like on the original, okay? So you can brush side to side like this. You can go up and down, or you can go kind of a crisscross pattern like this, or you can even do random, it's up to you. Each one will give you a slightly different look to the background. The longer the brush strokes like this, the smoother your background will be, okay? But again, you can go up, you can go, you can go long, brush strokes up and down all the way through, or you can do sideways ones like this. Either one's going to be fine. You can even change it up. Once you've got it all covered, you can decide to switch it up and go in the opposite direction. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. So let's say, just going through here. And again, the reason I'm using this bigger brush is because my canvas is so large, I can uh, cover much more of it more quickly. My paint is a little bit on the thick side, so it's laying on a little bit thick. I'm gonna use the brush here in a bit once I've got the entire front uh, covered. I'm gonna use the brush to spread the paint out a little bit. I don't want it so thick. My choice, you can have a thicker layer background if you want. So again, top to bottom, all the way through. So I've got the wife hanging out with us, at least for a little while. She's playing admin, trying to get rid of some of the spammers. If you guys can say hello to her. So her name's Erica. I can embarrass her a little bit. If you guys can say hello to her and thank you for <laughs> helping me get rid of those spammers. Again, her name is Erica. She might, you might see her answering some of your questions too. Erica Mendeville. All right. So there's the front of my canvas completely covered in this blue. Okay. Now watch what I was talking about. So uh, my paint's a little thick. I can do this with my brush to spread, spread that paint across. I'm not adding any more paint to the brush. I'm simply taking it and spreading the paint out so that it gets a little bit uh, smoother. I'm spreading it from some of the uh, heavier areas I'm just, I'm just using the brush to spread it around I spread it around the other thing I was talking about is changing directions if I want I can start brushing the other direction now like this and see what that looks like maybe I'll like it like this instead okay like this it creates a slightly different effect to your background this uh, brushing up and down like this creates vertical streaks right streaks that go up and down and when I add the snow to the background it's actually going to help it look like it's snowing a little bit because those little streaks will blend in with the with the snow and you'll get an effect as if it's part of the snow okay so i'm going to leave that for a second let me go ahead and make sure my phone is plugged into power my my, my uh the phone that i'm using for my camera don't want don't want to uh, don't want it to um, lose power part way that, ha that has happened to me in the past Quite a few months ago, it happened on a feed that I was doing that was no fun. Luckily, I had a backup and I was able to quickly get back on. All right, I'm looking at the comments, everyone. So if you guys, what I like to ask is you guys let me know where you're painting from, who you're painting with, right? Um, 
So if you guys can add that in the comment section, that would be fantastic. Penny, no, she does not. I mean, she has painted with me sometimes, but uh, I think she she uh, prefers I do the painting. <laughs> All right. Sheila, how's it going from Minnesota? Connie Bales says, or Bayless, Bales or Bayless, I'm not sure, Connie, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Says it's the first time. Howdy from North Texas, fellow creative. What's happening, Connie? Yes, Gene Hill, absolutely. So I like to paint my sides. You don't have to, it's up to you, right? Uh, but I do like to come in here and you can do it one of two ways. So you can make the sides match what's on the front, meaning uh, something like this, watch. Let me show you on the original because the original is painted around the sides. So on the original, what I did is I match, I match the front uh, I'm sorry, match the sides to what's on the front. So for example, here where the snow is, the snow overlaps to my edges. And I got a little bit of blue paint from earlier accidentally when I was brushing across, I put some across here, but that should be white. Okay, this should all be white right here. And then my blue, the blue on the front overlaps around the sides and the top, right? White on the bottom. So again, I, I typically, that's what I'll do. Uh, if, you, if you paint your sides, that's one option. The other option is to simply paint your sides all one color and leave them like that. In this case, for example, maybe you take blue and go all the way around. Uh, or what you can also do is you can simply leave them white. Some people like to leave their sides stark white. They don't add any paint to them. And that is an option that you guys can, um, you know, it's up to you, whatever you decide, uh, whatever looks good to you. But I do like to paint my sides. I just think it creates a nicer aesthetic whenever I hang up my paintings on the walls on my walls and stuff if I'm not using most of my paintings like this don't have I don't put them up in frames so I like to have the edges painted now here even though when I add the white for the snow I can oh I can go around and um, wrap it around my edge I am just gonna go ahead and go blue first all the way up and down okay I don't, because I'm on an easel, I don't do the bottom edge. That goes last. At the very, very end of my session, I'll add paint to the bottom edge. After I sign it, after I sign my piece, I'll flip it over on its, on its edge. On its, you know, I'll flip it upside down, and I'll do that bottom edge last, and I'll, I'll let that dry. If I do it now, because it's on an easel, the paint will cause the uh, easel to stick to the easel, and that's... Sometimes it can cause damage to the canvas when I pull it off. So, so again, the very bottom edge down here, bottom edge of my canvas, I do that at the very, very end of my painting session. Okay, but again, this is optional. You don't have to, you don't have to paint your sides if you don't want. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I am going to take, <coughs> I'm going to take my dryer here in just a moment to speed up the drying process. So Acevedo. First time here, awesome soul, welcome. Adrienne Loser Losser, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hi from Adrienne in Silverdale, Washington. What's up, Adrienne? Thank you for being here. Clara in Central Minnesota, first time painting with you. Awesome, Clara, thank you for being here. Roma Burma, I'm very excited from Amira. Hi, Amira. Amira's back from last night when we did the gingerbread house together. Okay? For those of you that might be interested and you have kiddos that want to paint, last night we did this gingerbread uh, piece. We did it from scratch, completely from scratch. If you're interested, this video is available. If you have any kiddos that want to paint along or even some adults, go over to the live tab on the main page and this will be right there waiting for you to come and paint along, okay? So again, gingerbread house under the live tab on the main painting with Jesse page. All right, let's get going. I'm taking my blow dryer to speed this up. Just gonna turn it up. This won't take very long. Gotta make sure it's on high. Now again, if you do not have a blow dryer, do not stress about it too much. You'll still be okay. Acrylic paint does 
dry quite quickly regardless. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually add my white layer of paint, okay? Um, I'm, I'm going to come back and add another blue layer over the top area of, uh, above my white afterwards. So first I'm going to drop a layer of white right in here. What I'd like to point out is this. When I do my layer of white paint, I am going to create a little, a little depression in here right about the about in the middle somewhere right as you guys as you if you can tell this tree in the middle is slightly over to the right on my new painting i'm going to bring it a little closer to the center i want to center that tree a little bit whatever you decide to do on yours is absolutely fine but i am going to create a little depression in my little horizon line for that tree okay that tree is going to be added later i want to be able to see a little bit of that blue underneath that little shadow under the tree uh, i want that to come through and that shadow is actually created by the blue background. So when I come across with my white in just a moment, I'm going to bring that down and then back out. Okay. So for that, I'm going to take my blue brush, my, the brush that I was just using. I'm going to take that and stick it in my water cup. In between uses, you want to take your brushes and put them in the water so they don't dry out. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this little three quarters inch flat brush. Again, when I refer to that size, I'm talking about width here. And you can have a, you can be using a bright. Uh, these are technical terms for the brushes. You can be using a bright for this. Uh, I like to use brushes with synthetic bristles. Okay, they're nice and um, stiff and smooth. So that's, uh, it creates a really nice brush stroke. So I'm going to take just some plain white. Now my, all my paint down here is dry. Okay, pretty much dried out. And that's what I want. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of come over to the side here a little bit. I'm just going to make a couple of marks on the edges. That, that's, you're going to find your own, wherever you decide to put down your uh, snow is up to you. You can go a little higher than this or a little bit lower. But this is approximately a little less than a third of my height on my canvas. So if I just kind of eyeball it, I put down that line, those lines right about at about a third. Okay. A little bit less than a third. So here's what I'm going to do. Right about the middle, I'm just going to do this. And it can be a smooth line for now. Okay, something like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to come in here and I'm just going to start brushing my paint right into the onto the canvas. Now it's going to be transparent. Acrylic paint has a very transparent quality especially against when you're using a light color against a dark background so we're going to be layering the snow a little bit for now on this first step on this first layer it's going to be kind of a quick quick layer that we put down don't sit there stressing about trying to make everything perfect and even it's not going to happen on this first step it's going to require at least one more step one more layer of paint afterwards. The main thing is to put put in your layer of paint. Rather quickly, you can kind of you can kind of uh, move your brush strokes in different directions, curved, right at snow. Doesn't have to be super smooth. You can go in different directions if you'd like. But as you can see, my, my paint, there's areas where it looks lighter and there's areas that it looks a little bit more of a, has a little bit of a blue hue coming through uh, from the background. I'm not worried about that. That's all going to change when I do a second and maybe even a third layer, we'll see. Um, but for now, that's all you really want. Go ahead and put some white down. Now, I'm not gonna do my edges here at the moment, the sides of my canvas, because they're still wet. I didn't take the blow dryer to them. So I'll wait a little while before I do that, but eventually I will wrap that snow around to the sides. All right, as you guys work on that, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the comments, see what we got. All right. Angela Ship, how's it going? Oh, that's, uh, you're saying thank you to my wife. 
Awesome. Uh, Angela, yes, that's right. That's what, that was your question. She answered your question there. And again, every, if anybody just joined in, just want to remind you guys that the video will be available uh, afterwards. When this is all done, this video will be available for you to go back to. You can watch it. You can find it under the live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page here on Facebook. <clears throat> Up towards the top, there's a little live tab. You click on that and you're going to find all the previous videos that we've done. And then, I don't know how many there are now. There's a bunch of kids-centric ones in there. Um, and then there's a bunch of one, a bunch of paintings on there for um, more like this, a little more complex for all ages, all levels. Uh, they require a little more patience and a little more time. But you can go there and just kind of explore a little bit, see if you find something you like. And um, yeah, feel free to paint along with those whenever you'd like. Okay? But all right. Anna McElfresh says, first time here. Welcome, Anna. Angela Schiff, awesome. First time here also. Fantastic. What's up, Angela? Angela G. Nick, Haley, and Mom Mary from Oroville, California. Hi, Mary. Hi, Nick. Hi, Haley. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Shelly Marie, also first timer here from Central Minnesota. Hi, Shelly. Welcome. Cindy Hendricks. From North Carolina, first time in this painting, like all of them, are beautiful. Thanks for sharing your talent. You're very welcome, Cindy. Thank you for being here. Hope you guys are all enjoying yourselves. Okay, let's see. Whoops, I think I lost. Uh... Taylor, how's it going? Julie from North Carolina. All right, guys. So once we've laid this part down, this snow down here at the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to add another layer here over the top. Another layer of this dark blue. I just want to, I want to make this area up on top a little bit more solid. So I'm just going to take a little bit more blue. Now I'm going to go back to my big large brush in just a moment. But before I do that, I'm going to take a smaller brush. One that I haven't used yet. And what I'm going to do, this is my little half inch brush. It gets a lot of use around here. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take some blue. I'm not going to worry about drawing my white here at the bottom as I'm working on the top and painting up here. This is going to be drying without me having to use the blow dryer. We'll see what it looks like once I'm done up here. But when I go back to this, if it's not dry, then I'll take my blow dryer to it. In the meantime, I'm going to take this blue and I'm just going to right over the top. I'm just going to create a little border to help me keep from uh, going down into the white when I do this next step. It's going to be a little hard for you guys to see this because it's blue against blue, right? Blue over blue. But I'm just creating a nice little border here where I'm barely, barely going right above my snow so that now when I take, now I'm going to take this guy, put it back into my cup, grab my big brush. Whoops, almost knocked over my little brush, there, the little tiny one. I'm going to take my big brush out. There's all kinds of water on here, right? In my... Uh, in my brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, in this step, I'm going to use a little bit of that water. I'm going to take my brush and squeeze it onto my plate to remove any of that, to have that extra water go down into the plate. Okay. I might even actually take it, dip it back into the cup and bring a couple of little droplets over. I need a little, little bit of water for this step, a little bit. Okay. So again, I just added, added a little bit of water to my paint. Now I'm going to take my brush, I do want to take out that extra water that's in there because there is br there is water down in the bristles that will come out and drip onto my canvas and I don't want that. Okay, so just cleaning that up. Now, I'm going to take a bunch of this blue. Okay, taking a bunch of blue from my plate. I'm going to bring that over and I'm going to mix it in with that water. So I want a little bit of water in this mixture. It smooths out the paint a little bit, and it's going to make it so that the layer's a little bit thinner. By adding a little bit of water to the paint, it's gonna make this layer a little bit easier to work with, a little smoother, a little bit thinner. So now I'm going to come in here, now I can brush in different directions. There's a lot of snowfall. 
a lot of stuff happening in the background there on the original painting and looks almost like got a lot of snowfall got all this glitter that's up there almost like we have a, a, a light blizzard going on how about that or a little bit of a heavy snowfall so I'm just gonna go through here now you can still if you'd like brush all in one direction to keep it nice and smooth if that's what you'd like and again vertically or horizontally all entirely up to you so I am going to ask you guys whoops almost lost my easel there I am going to ask you guys especially those those of you that are new here I always like to request that you guys send me pictures of your masterpieces okay so when you're all done with your piece whether it's today or tomorrow please send me a picture of your painting uh, send it to me via messenger here on Facebook send it to painting with Jesse you just go to the messenger part um, upload your picture and send it over to me what I'll do is I will post either later this evening or maybe tomorrow morning I'll post make a large post with all the paintings that people the pictures that people shared with me people love seeing everybody's work and you guys will get a chance to see all the different variety all the different uh, choices that people decide to make even though we're all essentially looking at the same thing uh, we're all going to create something different right and that's kind of the beauty of this stuff so if you don't mind please send me a picture if you guys are painting in a group take a picture of yourselves holding your paintings and send them over to me that would be so awesome now if it's the first time you're ever sending me a message you might have to send me a message first without the picture and then right after you can then put the attachment into the comments so you might have to say hi Jesse you know this is so and so I painted with you earlier I'm trying to send you my picture and then me immediately after you send that you'll be able to send me a picture I'm not sure why Facebook does it that way but it is how it kind of works all right guys so I've got my layer of painting of paint on there okay um, you guys work on that for just a bit Wanda Cox Harrington says just started watching we'll have to do this later gorgeous Awesome, Wanda. Yeah, uh, Susan Katowski says, I love seeing everyone's work. Yeah, it's really fun. Uh, it's really fun to come back and watch, you know, uh, and see what everybody comes up with. Because I guarantee you there's going to be lots of people making different choices. The number of reindeer you put in there, the number of trees, the colors and stuff like that. People are going to decorate their trees differently. So, And if you don't have glitter, please don't worry about it. Use whatever you've got, right? If you don't have sequins, don't worry about the sequins. You can always add that later anyway. If you have, if you don't have any of that today, and you can always you can always go back, uh, order it online, or purchase it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. I'll show you guys the stuff that I use, kind of close up, so you get a, a good shot of it, and then um, you can always order that and apply that later. I'll explain that a little a little more later on. Okay. But all right, here's what I'm going to do next. I've applied some paint there to the to the canvas. I'm going to take. My little my one of my paper towels here okay and I'm just gonna dip a, a little part of it in water okay like I'll do this I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take my water cup okay and I'm just gonna go like this I'm gonna take my finger and grab some water and what I'm going to do is this kind of like a little sponge I'm just gonna dab whoops different areas of my of my uh, canvas can I turn it I do want to turn it what I want to do is I want to, I want to lift a little bit of that paint and it's subtle it's nothing too crazy I can put I can put my hand behind the canvas so I don't push too far back on it okay you can also do this you don't have to have a lot of water on your brush on your paper towel I'm just going through and dabbing removing a little bit of the paint in some parts of my painting once we add snow and glitter and everything else to the background that's this is all going to help create some of these little lighter areas back there so again, just going through and then just taking my paper. This will actually work without water also, so play with it a little bit. You don't need to do much of this, just find a few little spots. Again, all we're doing is removing some of that paint on that last layer. All right, 
something like that. All right, so you guys got about you guys got about one minute, maybe two, before we move on to the next step. Looking over at the comment section, Dusty says hello from McQueenie, Texas. Tate, Jamie, Sherry, Kaylin, Nina, and Lily. That's a good group right there. It sounds like a good group. Fantastic guys. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you guys send me a picture of all of you painting together, holding your paintings. That would be fantastic. Okay, so welcome to you guys. Hope you're having some fun with me today. I know I'm, I always have fun doing these. It's work, as I like to say, but it's always fun. So thank you for being here. If you guys are having half as much fun as I am, then you're in a good place. Terry Crow, hi Jesse, this is Terry from Northern California. This is my first time watching you paint. Thank you for sharing your gift with us. My pleasure, Terry. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. Jennifer Perkinson, hi, Louisiana. How's it going, Jennifer? Yesenia Cruz, hello, I love your paints. Hi, Yesenia. Let's see. Gloria says painting with my sister Izzy. Awesome, hi, Izzy. I know Gloria's painted quite a few times, so I don't know if it's your first time, Izzy, but welcome if it is and thank you gloria for inviting your sister i'm assuming you invited invited her so welcome to both of you sheena from connecticut we have rylan reese and reagan almost lost your comment there rylan reese and reagan hi everyone shoban Gwyn Irwin from alberta canada how's it going all right, Izzy. Izzy says, yes, first time. Awesome, Izzy. Colleen Elizabeth. Hello, and then hi from Sweden. Who's this from Sweden? Malin Johansson. Awesome. All right, guys. So we got our background in place. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't going to be drawing this. I'm going to come over here and take a look, see what we've got. Let's see. Looks like it's still a little bit, a little bit wet. So I am going to go ahead and take my dryer so, speed up the drying process down here. should do the trick right there sure enough then turn up my Christmas music a little bit so now I'm gonna go back to my big brush the big brush that I used earlier this guy here the three quarters inch brush just gonna clean it up a little bit some sitting in my water cup and of course it picked up some of the other paint that's in there no big deal so watch now when I grab my white paint and apply it to this area everything's gonna get a lot whiter a lot brighter Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier. Almost always when you've got a light color that you're applying to a dark over a dark color, there's going to be some transparency. Um, the, the layer on top is going to be transparent and you're going to be able to see some of that under layer come through. You don't stress about that. You simply apply your paint and you move on. Then you come back. And you do and you do another layer over it in some cases you'll require three layers or four layers it just really depends on um, the paint that you're using <clears throat> let me know if my music is too loud folks sometimes the mic will pick it up a lot louder than I'm hearing it and it may be difficult for you to hear me so just let me know in the comment section if it's too loud okay Carol from Toronto Canada how's it going Anna McElfresh <laughs> Kelsey and Sydney, was that? Yep, Kelsey and Sydney. How's it going? Megan and daughter from Minnesota with my sister Caitlin and niece Emma in Montana. Awesome, virtually Montana and Minnesota. That's how we do it around here, folks. Yeah, I, I notice a lot of people like to do that. You guys will all paint together, but you're in different cities and states, and that's pretty fantastic. Love seeing that. Super cool. But all right. And again, when I'm brushing here, I'm just kind of randomly, I'm generally painting in the same, direct, same direction, but again, this is snow, so it can, we can paint in different directions if we'd like. It creates a little bit of a, a little bit of a, of a almost of a, a, a dimension, a little bit of dimension, it gives the snow some dimension. Later on, if we come back and do a thicker layer, 
uh, a third layer, it actually will make everything even stand out a little bit more. So again, that's all we really need for this step. I am going to go ahead and paint my sides now to match. So in between steps, as I, when I come over and I do this, if I'm going painting over paint that's a little bit wet, I might pick it up with my brush, right? So I might pick up some of that blue paint, which I did a little bit. I'll just take a brush, I mean a paper towel, and I do this. Just remove it. There we go. Melissa asks an excellent question. She says, um, why did we paint the bottom blue when we were going to paint over in white? So, excellent, excellent question. I, so, you can't really tell too much from the camera. I'll try to bring it, see if maybe you can possibly see it. <clears throat> but you can actually see a little, really, a really light hint of blue coming through the white layer on the original. That adds a little bit of dimension to my snow. Okay, we could have left this completely white. In other words, we, we didn't have to bring that blue down all the way down. We could have just kind of brought it down on the original first layer. We could have brought it down just to right here and then all this would have been just white, but you wouldn't have the little subtle changes in tone uh, where some of that blue still bleeds through on the very last layer. Okay, it's a personal choice. You don't have to make it this way. You, there's plenty of other paintings that I've done with snow that we don't do uh, a background in a different color first. But for this painting, that's kind of the effect that, um, I, that I was going for. But yes, that's why, that's why we did it in this case. However, it would have worked. It would have worked without that layer of blue all the way down. But anyway, excellent question. Excellent, excellent question. Okay. You got it. My pleasure. All right, everyone. So here's what we're going to do next. <clears throat> As this layer is drying, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and put in our big Christmas tree here in the center. Okay. Now, the trickiest part is going to be the star. We're not worried about the star. That doesn't come until later. But the trickiest part is going to be the little skinny part here on top, okay? So your tree, what you want to do, and yes, this background is still a little bit wet. No big deal. For this, I don't need to dry my canvas, but I am going to take one of my smaller brushes. I got this little um, flat brush, a little small thing. Uh, that I'm going to take some white paint for my plate with. Now, what you want to do is this. <clears throat> Depending on how high you're going to go on the tree, keep in mind, if you're going to add the little star up on top, that you want to leave some space for that, right? So you're not messing with having to adjust that later. Just kind of gauge where that star is going to be. And then find about the middle of your canvas. It doesn't have to be perfect middle, but kind of come close. So let's say we'll do this little tiny mark first little tiny mark you make a little tiny mark because if you don't like where that is you can easily change that you can uh, remove it and move your mark somewhere else but this little mark right there is the very top part of my tree okay and then from there I'm just gonna go draw a straight line down okay something like that gives me a visual of how tall my tree is going to be now I can decide do I want it a little bit taller Sure, and I can just add a little bit more to it. What you don't want to do is go really tall first and then decide it's too tall. Okay, so just kind of be careful on that. Apply your little mark wherever you feel like you want the tree and then look at it and see if you, um, you know, if you like it and then go ahead and do that. Let's see, somebody in the comments section said, oh, Karen says to Melissa, wondering too. Yep, uh, anytime you guys have a question about any of the processes, please let me know. I love answering questions like that. Uh, sometimes as painters that, you know, we've been, those of us that have been painting a while, it's not always evident, you know, that we're kind of doing something kind of second nature or, or just uh, on automatic. And so if you have a question about something, please ask it. I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer any of the technical questions you guys have. Also, there are different approaches to painting. So be aware that the way that I'm doing something may not be the way somebody else with experience might do it right? There's different options. There's different approaches. So just be aware that what I do isn't necessarily always going to be, it's not the only way. There's plenty of different ways to, to uh, approach painting. Okay. So, but anyhow, there's the top of our tree. Now what I'm going to do is this, and this is where you want to be careful. 
Let me lower the music a little bit so you guys can all kind of hear me. A couple of things. On this first step, I'm going to start adding the width of my tree. I'm going to come down. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be making straight, not straight, but smooth lines down. I'm not going to add any of the little rough edges that the tree has or will have at the end. Okay, what I want to worry about is how thick I'm going to make the tree. Um, air, if you're going to air, air on the side of making it skinnier because you can always add a layer of thickness, a layer of paint to make it whiter as you go. So I prefer that you guys make them a little bit skinnier than what, than what you envision it being at the end so that way you can slowly make it larger. If you make it too big to begin with, that's hard to fix. Okay, you have to remove paint, and sometimes when you remove the paint, uh, you sometimes will remove the background from the, you'll remove some of the background paint as well. So to avoid any problems, make sure you're using a small brush if you've got one. And then what I want you to do is you're gonna start, so what I'm gonna start adding is down in here somewhere. So down over here, approximately, I'm just gonna do this nice and skinny. And it kind of comes out a little bit. Okay. So kind of like that, <clears throat> I'll take a little step back and I'll look at it. Okay, as I look at it, I decide, okay, I want to make it a little bit thicker. So then I slowly can start adding thickness a little bit at a time. Okay, again, you don't want to make it so thick or so wide to begin with that you decide it's too big and you want to erase it. And that's going to be, that can be problematic just to save yourselves a little bit of a headache. Okay. So I get, I'm taking a little step back. I'll look at it and go, okay, that's pretty good. It's kind of getting close to where I want it. And this layer is going to be transparent. That's the other part that I was going to say. This layer is going to be transparent, so there's going to be some blue coming through. I'm not worried about that. Once I decide, hey, that's pretty much the size of the tree that I want, or it's close to it, keep in mind that when we make the edges rough, we add the little... Um, the little, uh, all these little edges that stick out, little points and stuff for the pine needles that are coming out, branches, etc. It's going to add a little bit of girth to it. It's going to visually make it a little, little bit wider. So, so get close to how you want it. Then you can grab your brush. I'm switching brushes here for a moment and then just going to come in here and just on the inside, quick layer of this white paint. So I just want to stress everyone, please ask your questions. There are no bad questions. Lots of you are first timers or newer to painting. And when you ask a question, somebody else may benefit. Don't be shy. This is a relaxed and mellow atmosphere. I, compl I completely understand that there's a lot of new people. Um, part of the reason why I started this page was to introduce painting to people that maybe had been wanting to try it and never had. So naturally, there's going to be a lot of questions. I, I completely understand when you have questions. So if you have one, please don't be afraid to ask it. Um, whatever the question may be, whether it's something about the process, whether it's something about paints. When I come down here towards the bottom, I'm going to remove a lot of the paint from my brush. So there's very little paint left on it. Okay, and I'm just going to lightly come through here. And I'm just kind of dabbing through. I want a little light layer of white over that blue because eventually when I add more layers of white over the top of the tree, I'm going to leave a little blue area down there. Light blue band creates a little bit of a shadow underneath the tree. So just lightly come in here, kind of tap over the top of it. So you still see some of that blue coming through, but you want a little bit of that, a lot of that uh, combination of blue and white down in there. Okay, and again, I just want to emphasize, this layer is going to be transparent. So put your layer down, we're not adding any of the uh, any of the pine needles or branches that stick out. Right now it's just a smooth triangle is basically what you're looking at. And then here at the top, just add your little little point. Okay. It's a Christmas tree, right? So it's uh, not gonna be perfect all the way through, but something like this. All right? Work on that for just a little bit. Let's take a look at the comments. Yeah, pine needles can be tricky, Diane, absolutely. Colleen Elizabeth asks, what kind of brush 
are you using? Okay, so I like using brushes, uh, synthetic bristle brushes, okay? And so this one here is a three quarter, the one that I'm using for the inside of the tree and the one that I did for the snow is a three quarters inch flat brush. You can also use a bright, okay, a bright brush for this. Um, what's cool about the synthetic bristles is that they're nice and smooth. Um, you can reshape them after you're done using them. Whenever you're done using a brush, at the very, very end, you clean them up with water and soap, right, to remove all the excess paint that's in there, and then you can reshape them. Kind of do this to put them back in, uh, into shape, in their original shape, and then when you store them, you want to store them facing upwards. You never want to store your brushes pointing down, not so much pointing down, but sitting on a, on a surface with a, with a uh, the weight of the brush. Some people will put them in cups. And so the, uh, the weight of the handle and everything else is on the bristles that will slowly cause the bristles to warp and they'll stay that way over time. Okay. So again, once you clean them up, reshape them and then store them facing upwards. So whether it's in a cup or what have you, or you can face them laying down, but don't put any weight on the bristles. You can also, you know, lay them down on the surface as long as there's nothing pressing down on those bristles. So anyway, synthetic, this is a, this is a golden Taclon synthetic bristle brush. Okay. Nice and durable. Lasts me a long time, but it's a three quarters inch. Okay. Great question. Jennifer Snyder says greetings from snowy. And then I lost her comment. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Greetings from snowy Bailey, Cal, uh, Colorado. Can you recommend a brand of paint? So absolutely. I have a variety of paints that I use. These are all acrylic. I use about four. There's four common brands that I use. Uh, this is a, these are all pretty much anywhere from a basic starter type of paint to kind of a medium quality paint. There's much more expensive paints than these, uh, more of a professional paint out there, but these are pretty good for what you get. This is an artist's loft brand that I pick up at Michael's. And this is what I used for the blue in the background. Pretty good paints, artist loft, Michael's, these leader, these quartz, Quart bottles cost about ten dollars. Um, they last a really long time. If you get them with a coupon, you can get them forty to fifty percent off, kind of depending on your coupon. This other brand right here is Deco Art. Deco Art is a really popular um, brand of paint. They have all types of different paints, uh, but this Deco Art gloss enamel is a really good one. Also, uh, Apple Barrel is another good brand of paint. This is more of a medium. These are both more of a medium quality paint. Uh, a little more pigment in them. Uh, I also use one last one folks before I get over to the, to the next step. So you guys that are ready to go, I use the fine touch. Also, I pick these up. These are from uh, the apple barrel and this fine touch I pick up at Hobby Lobby. Okay. These are good. This one's a, a $9 um, bottle for 16.9 full ounces. Um, $9. Again, with a coupon, you can get them for about 40% off. But all right, let's move on here. We're going to add some more trees here. We're going to start We're gonna start creating our little trees on the edges. I've got some bright green. I'm going to take same little brush here. This is my three-quarters inch brush. I bring some green and I bring it over to my mix plate. Okay? Now I'm going to take some black. When you mix your black with it, if you're going to mix black with yours, you can have really bright green trees if you want. You want to introduce a little bit of black at a time. The darker the paint, the more, the more quickly it changes the color of the lighter paint. So you want to add this a little bit at a time. If you go too, too quickly, you're going to make your paint really, really dark. And then you're going to go, have to go the opposite way. So a little bit at a time, kind of watch how it changes the color. You can also do this with brown. You can do it with Black and brown, in other words, mix black and brown into your green, up to you. I'm just introducing a little bit of black at a time. Now, I want a pretty dark green for this step. This is going to be kind of the first layer of paint that we add to the background. Okay, really dark. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing that we did on the white tree. Okay, so for now, I'm going to take this brush, put it back into my water cup, because I'm going to start with a smaller brush. My little... This one's a little half, uh, little quarter inch uh, flat brush. And there's usually a number on here, which I can't read anymore. I'd give you that number. <laughs> Sorry. 
I don't always pay attention to the numbers on them. So this is a, this is a, basically the size of it. It's a real small little quarter inch brush. Okay, same thing, synthetic bristle brushes. This is a white Taclon. If I remember correctly, this one's a white Taclon. Okay, here we go. Now I'm pressing my brush into the cup, uh, into the plate. When I press it, it makes the edge skinnier because I'm going to be painting with the skinny part of my uh, skinny edge of the brush. In other words, I'm not painting the broad side like this, like this, right? I'm painting with a skinny edge like that. Over here, we're going to have two, we're going to have two trees. Now, if you notice on the original, the tree over on the edge is really far over to the edge. I'm just going to bring that guy over a little bit. And again, start, start lower than what you envision your tree being height wise. Okay. Now I'm going to come over. This one's going to be a little taller. So it's going to be about right in here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other two. Right over here, approximately. And all the trees can vary a little bit in height with all that good stuff. They don't have to match. This one's about right in here. But on my in my forest, the two trees closer to my white tree are a little bit taller and the ones on the edges are a little bit shorter. It's pretty much what that looks like. Um, I'm going to Whichever tree you want to be in the foreground, you're going to do that one second. So what I mean by that is this. There's a tree that's in the front and there's a tree that's in the back. So the one that's in the back, you do first. And we're going to do the same thing that we did on the original. So going to do this. Create our little height. Whoops, and I probably went a little too high on that. That's okay. Slowly add thickness. Now everyone's trees are going to look a little different. Don't stress too much about trying to make them look exactly like mine. It's really interesting. Kids, whatever kids paint along with me, it's like they get super creative. They really don't care too much for, in general. They're like, ah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Adults on the other hand, tend to be really, um, they get, adults tend to get a little more caught up in trying to make it, make it look exactly like what they're seeing on the original, right? Or, on, or what I'm doing. Do your best if that is your plan, absolutely, you know, go for it, but don't stress too much if they don't end up looking exactly like these. As long as they look like, like trees, you're gonna be fine, okay? So don't stress too much. Okay, so I do this one, then I go ahead and do the next one. When I say the one in the front is gonna overlap the one in the back, what I mean that by that is this. So you paint over, right, just like that a little bit. So this came over the tree in the back. That gives it the impression that this one's a little forward. Even though, even though it's a subtle thing, it's a little forward in comparison. It's in the foreground in comparison to that tree. And then I go through and again I do the same thing. Just paint on the inside here. So I'm going to do my four trees all at once like this and then I'm going to go through and take a look at the comment section. I'm sure there's plenty of you guys asking questions and I'm over here painting away. I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to go too slowly. From time to time, take a little step back. I'm painting over from the side so that my perspective is a little bit skewed sometimes. I got to make sure I remind myself to step back behind the camera to see what I've got. So you guys are noticing I'm adjusting my trees a little bit at a time, making them bigger a little bit at a time. And my brush strokes in here, inside the trees, they're going to go in different directions, like the, you know, kind of random little, using different edges of my brush. Okay, next trees. I'll let you guys know in a moment when I'm looking at the comment section.
on these trees I'm not so concerned about leaving a border here at the bottom these come right up right up to my snow no little light border like what I did on the original blue tree just go right up to the snow connect right to it You want to try to work quickly, folks, right? Kind of follow, follow along with what I'm doing. The most important steps in all of this are always the first layers. Because once you have your first layers down, you can always come back and uh, work. You can actually jump around. So if, like, this is all the first layers of everything other than our reindeer. And the reindeer won't come till a bit later. But the first layers are always the most important. Because now... Let's say you're working on your trees and you're, you're right here where I am. Everything's set. As I start to add some of the details in the snow up here up on top, as I start to um, come in here and paint the reindeer, etc. If you start to fall behind, you can always jump ahead to where I am. And then always you can always go back. It's easier to go back and add details that you might have missed. Do your best to try to keep up, but don't stress too much. Just kind of, as I move, try to move with me. The important part of all of this up to now, the most important part is already done. All the layers are in place. Uh, other than the reindeer, all of this is what's really important. Your first layers on everything, okay? So, all right, work on that for a little bit. I know some of you guys might be going, Jesse, you're making me draw. You're making me make shapes. Do your best. Relax, have fun. In the end, it's just painting. You can always come back and do it again whenever you want. All right. Let's take a look at the comments. Pam from Nova Scotia, how's it going? You're back. Jennifer Kuntz, absolutely. You can watch this later. Video will be available under the live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page. All right. What if the trees are so wide the other trees don't fit? Let's see, uh, Supa says, what if the trees are too wide and, the, and so the other trees can't fit? Lee or Leia, I think it's Lee, says, does it matter if the paint is matte or glossy? Great question. Doesn't really matter too much unless you want a particular finish, right? Some people prefer a matte finish. Some people, people prefer a glossy finish. It just really depends on taste. What I used over here is a, it's kind of a more of a semi gloss on, on my original, but that's not really that important I'm, unless I'm specifically looking for a, a you know particular kind of finish. I don't really pay too much attention to that. Most of the paints that I use are uh, kind of a semi, but and they're naturally like that. They're just normally most acrylic paints are going to have a little bit of a of a gloss finish. Um, but if you are, if you have, if you only have matte paints, but you want a glossy finish, you can always add, um, you can always finish your paintings with varnish where there's a, uh, once they're all dried, you can always come in here and spray varnish over them, glossy varnish, or you can brush the varnish on also, which will give it a really nice glossy finish, but it just really depends. Okay. All right. Gina, Kansas City, Missouri, how's it going? And then we got Sharon from Ontario, Canada. Hi, Sharon. All right, guys, just want to take a moment while you guys are finishing up your trees, and we're going to get moving here pretty quickly. Just want to remind everybody, for those of you that are not aware, tomorrow we got our Jack Skellington, our Skellington Christmas painting, okay? Now, for those of you that are not aware, I am making, I'm going to be teaching you everything step by step. But there are stencils that I'm making available for the faces. Um, the, if you go to the event page, you'll find this for tomorrow. In the comment section, I posted the stencils okay, for the heads. And there's some of her body in there, but the, mainly it's their heads. I also posted the stencil for Zero and uh, the Santa sleigh. Okay, so uh, if you take a look at the comments, you'll see it there. But I am going to be teaching everything from scratch on that. So that's tomorrow. For those of you that are interested. Also, next Wednesday, we got the Charlie Brown Christmas. And again, same situation. 
I'll be teaching you guys everything from scratch, but there are stencils. I made a stencil for his head and the outline of his body, and then a stencil for Snoopy, just Snoopy's prone body, okay? So that's gonna be next, sorry, next Tuesday. I said Wednesday, it's next Tuesday. But if you look for that in the event page, you'll find that. Also, last thing, folks, before we continue painting here, for those of you that might be interested in or would like to help support the page, I have a virtual tip jar. And basically what it is is I've got a Venmo under painting, at Painting with Jesse, okay? PayPal, paypal.me forward slash Painting with Jesse. This information is listed in the description of this video. So if you look for that, look there, you'll see all this, all the details there. Zelle is just my phone number. Sometimes under Venmo, they will ask you to verify my last four digits of my phone number. And of course, those are right there. But anyway, for those of you that can and would like to, that is there. You guys um, help support the page, and that is fantastic. Uh, so anyhow, okay, not necessary. Other ways you can help the page is by sharing and letting people know, hey, there's this guy named Jesse, and he does these videos on Facebook, and they're a lot of fun. So you guys can support the page by um, by inviting people. Okay, but all right, everyone, I am going to do another layer of paint down here on the snow. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, I'm looking at it, so it's, it's still a little transparent. So this last layer will take care of that. So let's get ready to handle that. I'm going to go ahead and take a paper towel here and clean up my brush. The brush that I was just using, right? This guy right here that I was using for the uh, for my trees. Clean it up, clean it up. Sometimes your water in your cup gets a little too uh, too uh, dirty, too much color, and then you have to go get some more water, but so far I'm not there yet. I can simply swirl my brush in there, clean it up, and then take a paper towel, remove the extra. Now I can just grab some white paint. And I want to do this now because when we get to making our reindeer, we want to make sure that the background's nice and dry especially for those of you that maybe don't have a blow dryer. This is an important step. So whatever you're doing, make sure you don't miss this part. Make sure if you have a transparent background where you still see a lot of that blue coming through, make sure you go ahead and add another layer of paint. And here up against your trees, just be careful because if your paint is wet there, you don't want that to get on your white paint and your white brush and you bring it down into the snow. So be really careful when you get up close to your dark trees. So painting takes time. Lots of little layers and stuff that we have to work through. Of course, we can go really quickly, but if we went really quickly, we probably aren't going to produce anything that we're really going to be happy with. but it's all about layering. Got to have a little patience. While I'm here, I can take, a, take my paint. By now, my tree, my white tree is a little bit dry. Since I'm here with the white paint, I'm just going to go through and also add another layer of paint. Just be careful with your edges. Don't want to get too crazy too quickly and move too quickly because you might, I mean, it's okay if we accidentally take a little bit of paint and go beyond our edges. I'll show you guys in a little bit using this brush, this larger brush that I am gonna do that, but, but not by, I don't want to do it by accident. And again, here at the bottom, just get close, bring some of your paint down. You don't want too much paint on your brush. You want a little bit of that blue shadow underneath kind of peeking through.
Okay, now watch what I do here. There's still a little bit of paint on my brush, a little tiny bit, I don't need much. Just with the little corners, I just kind of come over and you might need a smaller brush for this. I'm just bringing a little bit of paint over to the corners, a little bit. Starting to create some of those little points where the paint's gonna stick out, creating those little needles and branches that are kind of sticking out. A little bit, be careful. If, you're starting to, if you start doing this and you notice they're too big, too large, you wanna to switch to a smaller brush. And all I'm doing is just a little bit of it. They're a little transparent, there's not a lot of paint on my brush. I'm purposefully doing it that way. Watch how I do it. Watch how I hold the brush also whenever I'm painting. I don't always describe every single step, but for the most part, unless I'm doing something really, really precise, usually I'm, hold, I'm holding my brushes towards the back of the handle. It makes it for a much more relaxed way to paint. Okay. There we go. All right, and then once again, we will, we will be doing another layer here, so we are going to be adding more to our tree here in a little while, so don't stress too much. Just kind of do what I just did, and we're moving on. You guys got about a minute and a half. Let's take a look at the comments. Penny, absolutely. Charlie Brown Christmas is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see. Shelly Marie says, can't wait to do Jack and Sally for my daughter. Heck yeah. I only have bright green. Black makes it dirt green. So we'll do that a little bit. If you were to see the paint, my paint up close, it's kind of what it looks like. If you have a bright green, maybe add a little bit of brown, maybe add a little bit of yellow. However, by adding yellow, you're going to make it a brighter, um, a brighter green, right? More like a lime green, but it's okay. Even though, so on my plate up close, when I added black to my green, it actually looked like a dirty, kind of like a dirty color, like a dirty green. That's okay. When you layer it, when you add it to here, um, you're going to be okay. We're going to, you can add... Later on, when we add some color over our trees, it's going to be a slightly lighter color. And those, the difference between the colors that we're adding to the trees is what starts to give it dimension and, and that really nice kind of forest green quality. Okay, but even if you wanted to do light green trees, that would be just fine as well. But black to your light green should be, you should be okay. You can also try it with brown. Um, you can make green, right? By ha If you have blue and you have yellow, you can make green. So if maybe the green that you've got isn't necessarily the green that you want, you can make your own green by mixing um, blue and yellow together. And depending on, again, the green that you're looking for, you can even green mix your original green into that and see what you get. So blue and yellow will get you some green. Mix those two together and, and play around with it a little bit. Okay, guys, here's what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm going to mix a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. Okay, watch. It's going to be, it's hard to see, but on my painting, on this guy here, up in these areas, we got some real subtle tones of green in there. Real, real subtle ones. It makes it, it adds to the snow effect, to the um, storm that's kind of in the background, snowfall that's back there. I'm going to take a little bit of green. We don't need much paint for this. So I'm taking a little bit of green, just a touch. And then I'm taking a little bit of my blue. Looks like I accidentally mixed in some white in there, no big deal. Just a little subtle. It's gonna be more of an more of a aqua, but it but I want really transparent paint. So I don't want a whole lot of this paint. I don't need a lot. So a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. It's going to be more blue than it is green. So it looks like a, almost like an aqua or teal even. Okay. And, it, and I want to emphasize everyone's painting, everyone's color is going to be a little bit different. There's no set exact color that this needs to be. All I'm going to do, I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm just going to quickly, I'm going to take this blue, I'm just tamping 
my brush into the paint and then I'm just going to come in here. Once this mixes, mixes in with the background and mixes in with the snow, there's not a lot of paint on my brush, very little as a matter of fact. Very little paint on here. And I'm just going through and adding some of this stuff throughout my background. Again, very little paint on my brush. I'm taking it, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm just coming in here, finding random spots on my painting. Don't stress folks, again, yeah, everyone's painting is going to look a little different. All we're creating is a little bit of a, of a variation to the background that when we add our snow <clears throat> and our glitter and stuff, it's going to create a cool little effect. So I'm going to give you guys a close-up of my original here, or the one that I'm working on here in just a moment. So you can all take a close look. If, you're, if your paint is coming down too dark or it's too intense, simply take a little paper towel and you can right over the top, you can spread it out a little bit, okay? But yours will kind of look like this. Real subtle, there's very little paint on my brush when I do this, okay? Now all of that mixed in with where I remove some of that background color. Once we add snow and glitter and everything else, it's really gonna take cool little, um, it's gonna make a cool effect to that background. So work on that for a minute or so, and then we move on. Somebody's asking, let's see, Nadia, did I miss your, are those cir the circles in the background or are you going to make the circles later? So Nadia, I'm not sure, are you talking about these back here? This is all in glitter. So the circles that are here are all in glitter. Okay, the if that's what you mean. And some of them are really subtle, um, but we just do a lot of what I just did. Um, and then these little white flecks are, are, I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to. That's all snow that we had with little, we can add those with the back of our brush or we can flick the paint onto the canvas. I'll talk about that here in a little bit, but I think that's what you're talking about. Hopefully I, I answered the question, okay? Awesome, everybody. I just took a little step back, looked at my painting. I'm going to add a little bit more of this that I, what I was just doing in the background. But I'm going to take a little paper towel. Look, do I have some white paint in there? I, I sure do. Don't want to do that. So I'm taking a little paper towel, taking a little dab of water, just dipping it right into my my. Um, why am I getting white paint on there? Oh, because I'm putting it on my finger. I'm going to. Just dipped it into my water cup, just taking some of this green and blue mixture that I've got on my plate. And I'm just going to lightly come in and just create more of this little teal background and just select spots, uh, random spots. Okay, I just go through and dab, dab, dab. Again, there's a randomness that's going on here. So don't stress too much about Again, try to make it too perfect or exactly like mine. In the end, once, once we've added the snow and the glitter and everything else, all that really matters is that it looks like you've got snow in the background. You've got a, you got a little bit of a, of a snowfall, okay? And that's all we're really looking for. This variation in the color in the background is just helping to create that effect. But once we've added the glitter and the snow and all that stuff, we're gonna 
you'll see the difference, okay? All right. Perfect. I'm liking it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do another layer of paint on our trees. Okay, this time, they're, by now these are dry. They should be pretty dry. I'm going to take my little quarter inch brush here. I'm going to take more green now, more of this little uh, green that I mixed, my original green, I'm gonna mix it with the dark green that's in the background now. So I'm lightening it up. Okay, just lightening up that original background green color. I wanna make sure I mix enough of it. So that I don't run out part way through. And it can be a little swirly. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended. I can see more areas. I can see areas with lighter green and areas with darker green. That's all I really want. Now what I'm going to do, so I'm just gonna come in here and start dabbing this paint. And I do this quickly, okay? Not on every single part of the trees, parts of my trees. I want some of that dark background to kind of come through. And then I do want to take my little brush now and I start to add some of the paint to the edges so that they start to stick out, creating some of those, some of those uh, needles and branches that are sticking out. There's a randomness to this. When we put glitter over the top of it, it's going to look perfectly fine. It's going to cover up some of the some of the stuff that you may not like. So if you're using glitter like I'm going to be, glitter is a really perfect way to mask areas that you don't you may not necess necessarily like. But in the end, what it really does is it creates a really nice finish. I'm going to give you guys a close up of this tree here in just a bit. Trust in the process, little by little, take your time with it. Okay, there's a close-up of my tree. Okay, just subtle differences between the two colors. It's gonna give our tree depth. And what I'm doing with my brush is I'm doing this. Just random, I come to the edges. Okay. Now this tree doesn't look flat like this one does. This one that doesn't have this green that I just added, this tree here, it looks flat in comparison to this one, okay? So when you do that, then you move over to the next tree. Take your time, folks, especially if you're newer. I know it can be a little frustrating some, sometimes. Don't stress too much. Do your best. Trust in the process little by little. It's all a learning process for you, especially if you're new, right? It's a learning process. So I want to show you guys the original real quick in comparison. So the original isn't that much different. This is that tree that I'm working on, the two trees that I'm working on now. Okay, these little skinnier points that I add, that I have here on the edges, I'll be adding with my little tiny round brush, my little liner brush. But what makes these trees really stand out is the glitter. Okay, I've got some gold and some glue, uh, green glitter that I'm going to be using for that. Takes time, takes time to build these up.
So notice I'm working quickly, not too stressed. This is not going to be perfect. I'm not looking for anything but a little bit of subtle randomness in color, variation in color. I still want some of that dark that's in the layer, the first layer peeking through in between some of the green that I'm putting down right now. And then don't forget to overlap, right? So if the tree, one tree's in the front, that's the tree that's gonna have its um, needles and branches showing in front of the other. So for example, here this tree is in front, this tree here is in front of this one. So when I paint over here, I just come across like this. I follow the shape of the tree in the front. If you have a different way to make pine trees, and I'm assuming, I'm, I'm thinking some of you are going to, please make them however, help make them however you want yours to look. You may have, you know, you've made pine trees in the, in the past and you're like, hey, I like these better. So make them whatever way you'd like, okay? The painting will work either way, but just want to uh, stress that I'm here to guide you, but if your painting ends up looking quite a bit different, it's perfectly fine. You make different choices than what I've got up here, that's great too. Have fun with it, relax, and just enjoy the process. All right. So this is what I've got so far with my trees. So we'll take a couple minutes on that. Jennifer Perkinson says, this is so relaxing. Good, Jennifer, glad to hear. Hi, Sue. What's up, Sue? You're very welcome, Sue. Yeah, let me show that up close again, okay? Jennifer Snyder's asking for an up close. What's up, Jennifer? There you go. And again, I just want to stress, I know some of you are probably sitting there, you know, maybe a little, a little bit um, anxious about the process. Don't stress too much. In the end, as long as your painting looks something like this, kind of close to this, you're fine. Yours does not have to look exactly like this. I just want to keep mentioning that as a reassurance because I get so many people often going, ah, oh, I'm frustrated because, you know, just relax, go through the process. Even all this up on top, everyone's is gonna look a little different, okay? So you'll see once I once I share the paintings and stuff from everyone that shares them with me, you'll, you'll see that everyone does something a little different. So I'm taking my little liner brush now, my little skinny, pointy round brush, small little thing. Just gonna, I'm gonna take a little bit of water. I'm gonna, it's got a little bit of water in it because I'm sitting in my water cup, or you can just dip it back in your water cup. We're gonna take this and mix it in with some of the paint. Now what I'm going to do is here on the edges, I'm just gonna randomly come in here and there's a little bit of a randomness to this. Holding the brush back here towards the back. I'm just gonna come in here and give, make some little points.
some needles that kind of stick out. And some of them can kind of point upwards. Some of them, some of them are going to go to the side, downwards at an angle. I've got lots of water in my paint. As long as it's not uh, for this part here, I add quite a bit of water to the mixture. As long as it's not runny paint, we're good. All right. <laughs> Adelina does not wait for steps. She's all done. Awesome, Esperanza. Yep. Kiddos tend to be, they just do their thing. Esperanza, yeah. Send them to, send them to Messenger. My Messenger on Painting with Jesse. If you're on Painting with Jesse, just go over to Messenger and uh, send them to me. If you email me, you can, you can also email me. Painting with Jesse at gmail.com. I think, I think my wife put it down in the comments. So you can just look for that. And then Angela says, what size canvas is this? is this? I'm watching very late and we'll need to watch the replay. So this is a 16 by 20 inch. Pretty much any size you use, you'll be okay. But if you print it out, the um, stencils for the deer as is, as they appeared in the printout on a regular size sheet of paper, it should be the size of these guys there. You might have to adjust them depending on the size of the canvas that you're using. Okay, so work on that for just a little bit. We're gonna add snow and stuff to the sky up here. Here's my glitter. Oops. Not my glitter, but my, these are my little sequins that I'll, that I'll be using for my tree. Okay, little sequins there. My big tree right there is going to have a bunch of these guys. If you don't have anything like this, don't worry about it. Okay. I picked this up at, um, I think this was my, I think it was Michael's. I got these from Michael's. I was wondering where I put them. I put them away, is what I did. <clears throat> but all right, everyone. So we're going to start on our snow. And there's a few different ways you can do snow. I'm going to show you a couple of them, and you decide which one's going to be working best for you. The less messy way is you take a brush like this, you dip it right into your plate, and you start doing this. And you can, by barely touching the canvas, you make really tiny ones. By pressing a little harder, you make big ones, okay? Um, the more snow you add, right, the more these little dots you have, the more snowfall. It's gonna look like you're the more, more wintry your paintings in a look and you can do this keep going da, 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 dot them all over the place you're also going to be adding some to your trees and you don't have to do the tree part right now adding them right over the trees you don't have to do that step just now depending on how wet your paint is i get it we can add this a little bit later just do me a favor if you see them forgetting that, to add snow to the trees later remind me there's often times that i forget little steps throughout my paint sessions Okay, so you can do it like this. Another way, and this is a messier way to do this, but it makes a lot of really cool, tiny, tiny dots. You can take some, take one of your smaller brushes, little stiff bristles, 
And you might have to practice first. Don't practice on your painting first. Practice this on a piece of paper or on a cardboard, etc. Now my water cup, actually, let me get a little bit, let me get some cleaner water. Again, I just want to emphasize this step right here, what I'm about to show you, can be quite a bit messier. You want to practice, if you've never done this before, you want to practice on something besides your canvas or whatever it is that you're painting on. Mm. So I'm going to take a little bit of water I can put it like in a water bottle cap or I can do it right on the plate on my on my mixed plate either one is fine don't need a lot of water it's a little tiny bit of water a little tiny bit I'm gonna take some paint and I just add the water mix the water and the paint together so I want this a lot more flowy runny it's almost like uh, like I've got white ink in here now again, I want you guys to practice on something else first. Here's what I would say. Let me let me grab. All right, this little shark thing that we were doing not too long ago with some kids group. So practice first. You can do this. You're going to flick your paint. You guys see right here? I'm, I'm grabbing the bristles and I'm doing this, flicking all these little tiny droplets of, of uh, paint onto the canvas, okay? The reason why you want to practice on something else first is because sometimes, depending on the mixture that you make, it might be um, too thick, too big, too wet. Now, once you get the right amount of uh, mixture in there, you can go through here and spray this all over the place. And now I can actually put some all over the trees without actually, without touching them with my brush. Again, I'm grabbing my brush now and I'm just flicking, right? I pull the bristles and let them go. You can also do this with a toothbrush. The bristles on a toothbrush are pretty uh, stiff. You want stiffer bristles. Okay, if the bristles on your brush are too, too loose, too, um, too soft, this won't work as well. You want stiffer bristles for this. And you can do as much of it as you want. After I'm done with this, now I'm going to come through and add a bunch of my smaller, um, or the bigger, uh, bigger dots with my... with the back of my brush's handle. So I needed to mix a little bit more, but practice, you can really, really make it so that there's lots of, make it like a really dense snowfall by doing this. All right, look at that. Cool. That's looking good. Once I've done that, I take the back of my brush once again, and I go back to making my big dots. Or maybe yours doesn't have these big dots. Maybe yours just has a bunch of small ones. Like the, you know, bunch of little tiny, tiny dots. I'll give you guys a close up in just a bit. Oops, made that one a little too big. Got a little got a little too excited about my snow. And if your trees are a little bit dry, now you can kind of just make some bigger ones. But don't do this until they're they're dry or almost dry. Don't need a lot to cover the trees. 
The more of this you add, again, the, the heavier the snowfall looks, but it's up to you. If you want bigger snow, uh, bigger circles, you just grab a bigger brush with a bigger handle. If you want smaller ones, grab a brush with a smaller handle. Again, folks, I'm going to ask that you guys share your paintings with me. Okay, don't forget, please, once we're all done, send me your paintings to Painting with, uh, you're going to go to Messenger on Painting with Jesse, and you'll send them to me there. You'll want to, if you, it's the first time you've ever sent me a message, send me a message, you're going to go in there and say, Hi, Jesse, send me the message, and then right after that, you can attach your painting to it. All right, so work on that for a couple minutes. Constance, what's happening? Faria Nira says, next time we can do a Christmas pony picture of my little pony. Ooh, that'd be kind of fun, Faria. Yep. Julie says, you can also tap a brush with another brush, less messy. What she means by that is this right here. So, and that is actually a pretty nice little technique, depending on your mixture of paint. So let's say this is my brush that I got. This is my spare brush. I got my brush here with a bunch of paint on it, right? I dip it into my mixture, my white mixture, and I'll do this. That's also a really nice way to do it. Okay, so... Let me actually, let me actually do it. Thank you, Julie. Fantastic. Yes, that is absolutely right. So again, there's different approaches to all this painting stuff. There's no one set way. And the more you explore, the more options you're going to give yourself because you're going to find out different ways to do stuff. So this is my brush with the paint on it. Let's go like this. And, you know, you can just start to do the same process all the way through, you can just kind of take your brush and tip, tip, tip. And I just lost my brush and went flying. Okay, but there you have it. So work on that for just a bit. In just a moment, we're going to come in here and we're going to add little touches to our white tree, the little edges. We're going to add our little star. Um, and then we'll see where we are. And we're almost ready to start doing our reindeer. So let's be ready for that. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to catch up. I know I've kind of been moving rather quickly.
All right, everyone. Wanted to give that song a little time to play. Such a cool little song. Whoops, my volume's back up. What is that? Huh. Get ready for some. Sorry, folks, give me one second. Got a commercial here I got I have to skip. So bear with me while I plug in my laptop before I run out of power. Okay. Here we go. What we're going to do next is we're going to add a little, another little layer, layer of paint over our big tree. What I'm going to do is I am going to switch over to my little, same little brush that I was using for the snow, a little small one. I'm just going to grab some white paint. So because this is the big tree in the center, it has a little bit more detail. Uh, I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to brush in different directions. Now with this brush, I can kind of come into the edges and so as I go throughout, kind of brush again, different directions, just layering. Still want some of the, I want there to be a little bit of a variation in intensity throughout the tree. Some areas you're going to be able to see some of that really light blue showing through a little and then other areas it's going to be mostly or all white. So this is pretty much the last step besides making our star before we go into our deer, little reindeer. Now watch when I get down here nice and close. Again, I'm leaving a little bit of that shadow coming through underneath between my snow bank, the snow itself and the tree. something like that now to my edges let's refine those edges make it look more like a like a pine tree so I'm taking my little brush I press it down into the can to the plate making my edges nice and skinny and then I can come in on the edges All right, 
Now let's make a little star. My little star on top or whatever ornament you decide your tree is going to have. Take a little liner brush. Get my little tiny thing here. You guys don't have one of these little small brushes. Um, you can, if you have a, a white marker with a really thin tip, you might want it, might be able to use that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this little point here up on top. So I'm going to, nice long skinny line. Okay, now watch. I'm going to do that again. All this is pretty dry. For the most part, you want to do this with this the background being nice and dry. If it's not dry yet, then don't do the step yet. This, this step can be done later. If your background isn't dry, all your little snow that you added is not dry, here, don't do this. But you would take your finger or your hand and you press it up against the canvas. You use that to support your, your um, brush stroke. Makes it easier to make a nice skinny line or straight line, I should say. Uh, you may also want to add a little bit of water to your mix. So if your, if your paint is a little on the thicker side, you can add a little bit of water to it and it will help it flow a little bit better. The other thing I like to do is I'll take my brush and I'll dip it into the paint. As I dip it, I push up against the plate and then I pull back and away. So what happens is that the tip of the brush gets nice and skinny. It's swirls it into a little skinny point. Now my lines are a lot smaller. Okay, so here's my main, the main lineup and I better take a step back. Ah, I can see it's a little bit crooked because again, I'm over at an angle drawing from the side of the canvas. It actually ended up being a little bit crooked. That's okay, I'm not stressing about that. But what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna draw a little, a little line over here, a little, line that comes out like that okay before I draw my, draw my little circle in the center the little round your center part I'm just gonna make those little points on my star okay like that there's a couple that go across the middle now on mine the original is really tall this is really skinny and goes up really high and then I put my star down but this one's going to be a little bit shorter. It's not going to be quite as long. That will work. This will work just fine. There are variations that will still work. So don't stress again. Don't want you guys worrying too much about making an exact version, an exact replica. Okay, so there's my little points. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I just come in the middle. I'm going to turn my easel towards me a little bit so I can get a better angle and then I'll put it right back. Okay. Take a look at take a little look at it, take a little step back and then you can start making the little adjustments. I'm going to make the little points longer. Okay, so these guys are going to get a little a little bit longer. The star's going to get a little bit bigger. And then the other thing is, we're going to make them into little points. Okay, they, they're like little triangles. They're thicker at the base and then they get wider. Let me show you on the original. Let me give you these a little close-up of what we're trying to do. So, we got this in place. We got the little skinny lines out, but now we got to make these thicker at the base and they, they get skinnier and form a point at the end. Okay, that's what's gonna make make them look like stars. So we got our little got our little circle in the middle. Now we start to add kind of like with our trees, a little bit of thickness at a time. 
Make them a little bit wider, a little bit at a time. Try not to cover up what I'm doing. It's a little tricky. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm what I'm working on over here, how I'm doing it. Now, I didn't do this on the original, but I am going to be adding glitter over the top of this star when it's all done. Not right now. All right. Whoops. Knocking stuff over over here. Okay. Archana, it sure will. It will be available later. Okay. Now I will also take my little brush, little skinny thing, and I will come over to the edges just kind of quickly. Elizabeth says I have silver paint can I use it absolutely <laughs> Melissa Melissa says dude the star is stressful <laughs> I know it can be maybe uh, practice on a piece on a plate you can practice on a plate or a piece of paper before you apply it up there just do your best do your best in the end you can always uh, grab a, grab a little sticker star and put it right over the top I'm kidding paint it you want to paint it okay do your best. Have fun with it. Too funny though. Yeah, definitely painting. Painting can be a little stressful some, sometimes. You wanna, you know, wanna do your, your best and relax a little bit. Nadia Avila, Avila says, Jesse, I messed up. What'd you do, Nadia? How'd you mess up? You can probably fix it. You can fix most anything. Okay. I just want to point out. I'm looking at the video here. All these little circles that you see up here, I made those with glitter, okay? It's actually a bunch of gold glitter that I used for that. So that's why they're, they're, they're standing out like that. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Clara uh, Berriter says, Berriter, Berriter. Sorry, Clara, if I'm messing that up. But Clara says, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. That's right, Clara. That is right. No mistakes, only happy accidents. Okay, so here's what I'd like to do next. We're going to go ahead and trace in. Before we do any glitter, before we're doing sequins, we're going to trace in our reindeer. Now, I'm going to lower the volume a little bit on this. Kind of like when you're backing up, when you're backing up a car, you need to concentrate. Right? I know a lot of you guys hold your breath a little bit, and you're going to be holding your breath when you're tracing out your, um, your deer and stuff. But let's talk about that for a moment. And I recommend that you all work. If you're working, unless you're painting by yourself, <clears throat> I want you guys to work together. Because if you did this in paper, and I just left a little piece down here so it's easier for me to hold it. But what you're going to do, this is my big reindeer here in the center. We're going to be adding the little swirlies on top. That's going to be the most difficult part of everything for those of you that are going to be doing antlers like this. Okay, but we'll talk about that later. We're not worried about that right now. Everybody take a breath. Forget I even talked about that. It's not there. Let's not look at that. So you're going to take your little deer. A couple of things. What you want to do, it's really easy to, to quickly start making the deer bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, again, if you're working with somebody, ideally I would take my canvas and put it down flat against my table because it would make it easier for me to trace it okay but if you're working with somebody have them hold it or you hold it and they do the tracing really lightly 
light pencil marks. You want to press your point of your pencil right up against your trace. Work slowly. I might only end up doing one reindeer to demonstrate. Because I want to demonstrate it fully. Again, I would ideally have to be doing this with my canvas flat on my table. Instead of trying to do this vertically. Okay, but nice and tight to the stencil. And the reason again why you want to have it nice and tight is that so is so that you have a really skinny reindeer, unless you're purposefully trying to make them a little bit a little bit bigger, which you could, a little stockier, if you will. But nice and gentle. Whoops, I missed this front leg, so let me go ahead and forgot the front leg. Nice and easy, nice and light. And the reason why you want to do it light lightly is so you can erase them if you don't like the positioning. Okay, there we go. Once you've traced it out, you want to go through and then just make little corrections if you need to. Like for example, right here, I can just go in here and erase a little bit. This is really, really light. And that's what we want. I'm going to adjust this back leg a little bit, made it a little bit too thick. Okay, so here's what my trace looks like up close. And I know some of you guys might begin kind of fancy and using carbon paper to trace this onto your canvas. All good. Just get your deer on there. And you want to trace, you don't have to trace them all first. You can trace them all, all of them all at the same time. I'm going to continue with this. Once you've got your traces done, or maybe you're doing one at a time, kind of up to you, I would suggest doing them all at once so you don't interfere. Um, they don't interfere with each other, the paint part. So I'm taking some black paint, a little skinny brush, my little liner brush once again. Now, I want there to be some water in my paint because the because we're doing some precision work here, the water is going to help you do that. You want to practice, add a little bit of water to your paint and then take your brush and do this on your plate. Okay, if you can get that kind of action where the paint just easily applies to your plate, you're good to go. What you're going to do is you're going to outline everything first. And you want to stay tight to your pencil, pencil lines, nice and tight. Again, I would ideally be doing this on a flat table with the canvas flat. It makes it gives me a little more control. But so you guys can see what I'm doing. If you decide to do it this way, you're going to, you're going to ride over your pencil line, nice and skinny. Okay. And the reason why you want to do it right over, is because if you do it on the outside, your deer are going to sl uh, slowly start getting larger, wider. If you need to make an adjustment to the neck to make it skinnier, you can erase your trace a little bit, whatever you did on your trace, and then redo that pencil line a little skinnier. Right? They're sleek, they're small, they're narrow. Once you've got your traces in place, and I know some of you guys are going, Jesse, why are you... Why are you making this us make such a hard painting? Ugh. <laughs> it is a little tricky, but don't stress, folks. Just go for it. Do your best. Take your time. And I would even recommend doing this part, practicing on practicing before you do it on your actual painting. It gives you a little bit of um, assurance that you're going to be okay. You're going to be able to do it. So stay tight to your pencil lines. Paint it right over them, especially with this outline part of it. So right here, what I can do, my when I did the trace, the legs got, they look like they came, they're touching now. So I'm just going to erase this part. You don't have to do this. 
you can leave your stencils as is. Whatever comes out of your stencils, you can leave them as is and just go with that. I'm just making little adjustments as I go. But the outlining is the toughest, toughest part. Now I'm going to go through here and I'm going to go ahead and finish up this tier. I'm going to color it in and show you guys how to do that. However many deer you decide to add on here, I don't expect for you to do it all within my, our session. It might take you a little time. You might have to come back or you might have to continue on your, do on your own when we're all done. We're already painting at two hours. We've probably got about another, about another 45 minutes. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking a bigger brush and you ought to be real careful. Once you, once you start to add the paint on the inside, you want to be careful because it can be very easy to accidentally go on the outside of your line. So take your time with this part of it. Use a small brush. I'm actually, I'm actually um, playing with fire because I'm using a larger brush than I normally would for this. Once you've done your outline, then you come in here and you start to paint the inside. In a moment, I will switch brushes to do the legs and the head. And this may also take more than one layer. If your paint is kind of see-through, don't stress about that right now. Just work on staying within your lines, getting your, um, your deer all colored in. And then you'll come back and do another layer after the first layer has dried. And it might be five minutes, 10 minutes, depending on where you are. Soon as I'm done with this, um, I'm going to start adding some glitter up here. Okay. Once you know how to do one deer, you can do all your, the other ones on your own whenever you whenever you got time for it. Whether it's right now, right, or or whether it's later, etc. You can sit. If some of you are doing five deer, six deer, that might take you a little while. But watch and do at least one of them, and then watch me with the glitter. Work with me on the glitter. So now I'm switching back over to my little tiny brush. I can already see a bunch of you holding your breath as you guys do this. Super common. I do it too. So I'm just using the little the, the little liner brush to come in here and staying help me stay on the inside of my. of my lines. If you're having a hard time keeping your hand steady, you can use your other hand. You put it down on your table, put your painting hand over it. Gives your hand a little bit of support. Okay. And don't stress folks, if you, let's say when we're all done here, you get your, you're behind, you're far from done. Again, don't worry about it. As soon as I'm done with this video, I save it, I hit save, and it goes right up to my live um, tab. And you'll just go back there and continue. The benefit of that is that you can pause it, right? Back it up. All of that good stuff. Kind of like you're watching a movie on Netflix. And I think I saw um, Gloria said, bring on the glitter. It's, it's coming. Whoops. Gave my little deer, my little reindeer a beer. Okay. If you do happen to make a mistake and you need to correct it, you can take a little touch of water on a paper towel, just like what I did earlier. When, yeah, how do I keep getting white paint on here? I gotta be careful. But a little bit of a uh, little bit of water on your paper towel. 
just like this, and then you lightly can go over the areas you want to clean up, and that will remove your paint. But you want to be careful, you know, just be careful with that. So you'll take a look at your gear, make sure you're not missing anything. So we're obviously mixing, missing the antlers here, which we'll do in just a little while. Okay, so again, this will likely take at least a second layer to clean things up really nicely, make everything nice and solid. Okay, but get your deer in place. I'm going to give you guys about two minutes. I'm going to be looking at the comments section, see what we've got. And then we're going to talk about glitter. Okay, we're going to talk about, about the glitter. We're going to talk about the sequins. Then we're going to get into, uh, we're going to get into doing the little antlers on our big deer. And um, I don't think I'm going to get a chance to do the other reindeer. We'll see. I'll, I might throw in at least one more. It depends on where we are. At about two four, at about one forty-five. Let's see. About one forty-five. I'll take an assessment. Look at where we are. But we're definitely. I'm definitely going to be showing you guys how to make the antlers, how to add all the glitter, and then once you see all of that, you can, you can add all that on your own, if you decide you're going to be doing more than one or two or three reindeer, or however many you're going to be adding to your painting. You're going to follow the exact same process that I did. You outline everything first. Okay. So trace it, look at it, look at your trace first and see if you need to make any corrections. Okay. Make your little corrections. Then you outline everything and then you go through and fill it in. When you fill it in, be very careful. I recommend using a really small brush to fill it all in, especially when you're up on your edges. So you don't accidentally go beyond your, lines your outside lines <clears throat> you can fix that if you do but it's just you want to try to avoid the hassle i know sometimes we get a little impatient we're like oh no I, but i want to finish fast or running out of time etc etc just take your time and do your best take your time and be careful i should say all right okay you guys got about Two minutes before we start talking about the glitter, and I know some of you guys are not going to be done with this part of it, but when you do, when I do go to the glitter and the sequins, watch me, watch what I do, and that way, um, and even even follow along a little bit, okay? Follow along a little bit with, this, with that glitter so you guys don't miss anything. Uh, Lorna, you'll be able to find the video on the live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook, okay? So... Just go to the live tab, you'll find it right there. Lynn Rose says, Lynn LaRose, you're a very good teacher. Ah, oh, thank you, Lynn. My first time watching, can't wait to paint this one. Fantastic. How did you get the deer all sparkly? Ooh, that's what's coming. So got a bunch of glitter, got a, got glitter paint. I'll be showing you guys my glitter paint. Actually, let me show you show it to you now. Why wait? Give me one second. <clears throat> Okay, so for those of you that are planning on doing glitter or you're going to get glitter, I'm, I know a bunch of you guys have glitter already. Let me show you the stuff, the stuff that I use. And you can pick this stuff up at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Uh, any of this stuff will work for our painting today. So my, the most... Uh, the one that I use the most, the glitter paint that I use the most, and it's not really paint, it's just glitter floating around in glue, right? So you basically, um, you're brushing glue with glitter right onto your canvas. Uh, the one that I use the most is this Craft Twinkles brand from Deco Art, Hobby Lobby, okay? I don't know, I think the bottle costs about maybe $2, dollar something, don't remember right now, but if you get it with a coupon, then it's a lot cheaper that way, right? Uh... The other one that I like, and I use, and they, have, they come in different colors. So this is a pearl color. Or they call it crystal, I think it is crystal. There's gold, there's blue, um, there is red and silver. Anyway, it comes in all kinds of colors. The other one that I often use is this brand from Hobby Lobby. Now this one's a little bit more expensive. Uh, I like the other one better, but this works just, it looks, it works really, really nice, nicely. This one's called Glitterific. 
And I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby. This one's like I said, it's a little more expensive. Maybe this bottle is like three bucks, two something. With the coupon though, you get it for almost half. Those are the main ones that I typically use, but you can find stuff like this. I got this one at, whoops, at Walmart. Got this one, this at Walmart, <clears throat> big old bottle of this glitter glue and um, bang for your buck. This is gonna last me a lot longer than the other ones will. And I don't remember what I paid for that bottle, but it might've been something like 253 bucks. Another one from DecoArt, Galaxy Glitter. This is my least favorite because it has a lot of uh, silver. All the colors have a lot of silver flakes in there. So you don't get just red or just blue. It always comes with a mixture of all these other colors that will show up on your canvas. But this one's also a DecoArt. This is Galaxy Glitter. Okay. All right. But I've got a bunch of colors on here. Mainly I'm going to be using this green right here from Glitterific. Uh, Folk Art. Sorry, the brand on this one is Folk Art. Their glitterific brand, folk art glitterific. I'm going to be using some gold. What I do is I will put everything on a plate first. There are a couple of rules that I like to tell people to follow when you're using glitter. Um, you want to add it to areas on your canvas that are already dry. So you don't want to apply wet glitter to wet paint. All you're going to do is you're going to mix up the two and, and the glitter is going to get dull. Okay. Um, the other thing is your brushes have to be relatively clean, free of, uh, free of any wet paint as well. Just getting a bunch of this glitter and putting it on my plate, folks, so that we get ready to add this stuff. And my reindeer all had different colors. I have purple on this one. I have blue on that one. That one's a crystal color. So it all depends on what colors you guys want to use. I'm just spreading out a bunch of glitter paint. A bunch of different glitter colors onto my canvas. Uh, I'm sorry, under my plate here. I'll show you here in a moment before I start to apply. But this is where things get really, really neat. I'm going to start adding some glitter up here, and then we're going to do the antlers. Like giving you guys a little time to to do one, at least one of your reindeer. All right. And I know this is going to be a little hard for you guys to see, but I got some of the colors I'm going to be using spread out on my plate. Got a little bit of green right here. Okay. Um, a little bit of green, a little bit of gold, got some red that's mixing with my crystal, got some red glitter, got some crystal glitter, and I might use some blue, we'll see. Yeah, I'll, I'll be using some of this blue for my, my big, big deer here in the center. If you guys have pink, if you guys have whatever colors you guys have, that's what you're going to use. All right, we'll worry about the blue here in just a little bit. What I'm going to do first, taking... Again, you want to make sure your brushes are relatively clean, so you don't want any wet paint floating around in your brushes. Okay? Rule, rule number one. Rule number two. You want to make sure that... Sorry, folks, give me one sec. You want to make sure that you... that your areas that you're going to be adding the glitter to are dry. So here I go. Taking a big brush here. I grabbed another brush. Just a big brush for now. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to do this. Okay, big, big round areas on my canvas or round-ish where I can just apply this gold glitter to. Just finding some spots, maybe some of the lighter areas on the background. Glitter works just like paint. If I let an area dry a little bit, I come back and paint over the top, then it intensifies the shine. This really does make a difference. Anytime you add glitter to a painting, it really makes it stand out and pop. So just find some spots. You're gonna go through there again, areas that are already dry, don't apply wet glitter or glitter to wet paint. Okay, it can be problematic. Okay, so there we go. Already you're starting to see a nice little difference. Okay. What I'm going to do next is I'm, I'm switching brushes. I'm going to take a smaller brush now. So, well, 
Give me one sec, folks. Let me grab. So I don't have to waste time cleaning my brushes. I'll just grab, uh, clean the brushes right now. I'm just going to grab some of my... I'm going to grab a clean brush from one of my little stashes back here. So, smaller brush. Now, this stuff. I can either take gold or green or both. I can mix them together. Take a little bit of green, a little bit of gold. And I can mix the two. So a little bit of green, a little bit of gold. There's no perfect here. There's no right. You can do whatever you'd like with your colors. But what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to come in here to my green trees. This makes them look really nice and sparkly. It's actually going to make them look like Christmas trees. So just find little select spots. Or your, maybe you can do your entire tree. All your tree can have glitter if you wanted to. Up to you. That would be pretty neat too. So play with this stuff a little. Okay. So look at the difference between the trees with a little bit of glitter in them. Okay, those right there. And again, you can take glitter and cover all your trees up with them if you'd like. With it. Right, all the way from top to bottom. There's these trees that have, that have a little bit of glitter on them already. Compared to the ones that do not have any. Okay, big difference. Big difference. So the reindeer, on the reindeer, I did the same process, but I used purple, I used blue, and I used crystal. This one has purple, that one has blue, and that one has a crystal color. Just my choices. Yours can have whatever color you want them to have. Now on my main tree, I'm going to use crystal, the crystal color glitter. I'm going to work a little more quickly now. Don't want to run out of time. You guys get the point. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the glitter here in the center for the center tree and the sequins at the same time. You can actually use your glitter. If you don't have glue, uh, it doesn't really matter too much because you can use your glitter to, to, uh, to use as glue. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm actually gonna take, instead of spreading it on like I did with the other trees, I'm gonna take the back of my brush. I'm just gonna dip it right into my crystal paint. And I'm gonna start doing, going to start doing a bunch of dots. Might have to switch to a, a bigger brush here in a moment. Because these are rather small, but that's okay for now. So what I'm going to do with some of these is I'm going to add my sequins directly over them. And this glitter is going to work, with, again it's glitter glue. It's going to glue the sequins right onto the, to the tree. Now, not all of these little dots are going to take a sequin, although I could if I want. That would look pretty cool, I guess. Again, choices. Cho choices, choices. Sometimes too many choices. Now, on my star up here, I'm just going to grab a bunch of this glitter. So just to give you guys an up close on that tree. Okay, now I will take my sequins. Okay, so I've got a bunch of them in this little container. Just gonna pour some out here on my table. Just a few, don't need too many. 
and they're just little small bits, little sequins, okay? Different colors, right? So a couple of ways that you can do this, sometimes it's difficult to grab them with your hand. You could kind of grab them with your hand and then press them up against the tree. I'll try it, see if I can, <laughs> and I just dropped it. Let's try that again, see if I can. There we go. You can do this with your finger. You can do this with a pair of tweezers, and I don't think I have any in here to show you that, but if you have tweezers, you can do it with that. Another way that you could do it, you can grab the back of a pencil, okay? You want to uh, dip this in a little bit of your glitter, just a little tiny bit. Don't need a lot, little tiny bit of glitter on your, on the back of a pencil or, or a brush or what have you. Then you can pick up, at least I'm trying to pick it up. Let's try that again. I'm trying to pick it up with the uh, pencil here. Okay, maybe, there we go. I just picked it up, grabbed it there. And I'll come over to the canvas and then press that right in there. <laughs> It's gonna be a little tricky. Give me one sec, folks. Let me, let me figure this out real quick. Probably the best way to do it without tweezers is you're just gonna grab them with your fingers, press them right in. Flat on a table is probably a little be, be a little easier as well. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna add a whole bunch of these. I just got an error message on my laptop where it looked like I'd lost the video. So let me see if I can get that back. Looks like you guys are all still with me, but for some reason. It looks like there's just a few of you left. Oh no, we still got, we've got a good group hanging out. Okay, for some reason. Give me one sec, folks, just trying to get to where I can see your comments. Bear with me one second. Not sure what happened here. Okay, we'll get back to that in just a moment. Okay, but anyway, we're going to continue adding our little sequins. So we add as many as we want, wherever we want. Right, so let me see if I can do my little trick. There we go. Okay. I had to switch to a different to a different brush. Now I can again. I'm using the back handle of my brush. I just dip it right into one of my glitter glitter piles, and then I grab a sequin. I just touch the sequin. I pick it up. Come over. Press hard enough. It sticks to the tree. Okay. I laid down my little sequins here on my table in front. Not sure if you guys can all see that. Since I can't see my feed, I can't tell what you guys are seeing. So hopefully everything's working out. So a little bit of glitter paint. I dip, I grab the sequin of the back of the handle and then I find my little spot. Again, you're gonna add more on here than I, than I probably would. Or actually, no, it looks pretty close to the original. Maybe I've got a little bit more, but you can do this as much as you want. As much, if you have different sizes. Oh, I have one big one that I'm gonna use for the center here, for my star. I got one big sequin right here and I'm just gonna take this one. Look at that. Right up in the middle of my star, cool. Now let me see once again, I'm gonna see if I can find my feet here. So you guys get the picture. We 
you just want to make sure you've got enough glue on there so those glitters so those uh, sequins stay on All right, there we go. I got my feedback. Yay. Getting a little worried there for a moment. So as much as as many as you want, just work your way through your tree. If you don't have sequins, you can pick these up. Like I said, I picked these up at, uh, I think it was Michael's. It's been a while. I've had them for a bit. Um, and let me lower my volume. And you can always go pick them up. I'm sure Joanne's has them. You can find these online. Any uh, probably costume jewelry place, jewelry place, or um, or kids crafts places will have them. So all the way throughout. Now I would add them in here on my tree, right, to kind of even things out a bit. I would take some more and add them in there. Again, I've, these are a lot, there's a lot more of them than I have on the original. On the original, I also have little tiny ones. I do have some of those in here as well, little tiny little guys. Just larger glitter bits. These aren't sequins. Anyhow, you get the, you get the picture. So, again... If you don't get done with this part with me today, right now, as soon as you can always continue working on this later. We're at 134 right now. So let's talk about the antlers on top of the reindeer. Okay, so this is going to be the trickiest part probably of all for those of you that are going to do this with me. Okay, you're going to want one of your little skinny brushes, right? A little tiny thing. Your little liner brush. Um... If you have a really thin marker, really tiny marker, you might want to do it with that instead, but I suggest you practice. You want to practice on a piece of paper, you want to practice on a spare canvas, whatever it is that you guys have handy. You're going to want to take some black paint, mix it with water. Okay, very important that you mix water with it. So I've got a little bit of paint right here on my brush. Find a spot here on my plate. Just going to take plenty of water, mix it together. Again, don't forget, water is your friend and it will help the paint flow nicely onto the canvas. Again, I spin my brush. Once I've got the paint and the water mixed in nicely, I will spin my brush so that I have a really tiny, skinny tip. Now, I've got a little top part <clears throat> on the the reindeer there's a little kind of a piece that sticks out where then I attach the antlers to that's not necessary maybe I'm gonna make that a little smaller I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit just a touch a little nub but it's not necessary you can you can attach these lines right to it now you typically only have one shot <clears throat> on this and I'm gonna remove uh, I'm gonna remove this sequin right there because it's going to be in my way. So again, you want to practice. If you're going to be making those little swirly lines. You want, you want to practice. I would take a piece of paper or a you know, plate or what have you. You're going to be making little swirl lines like that. Long lines. The trick with these is that you once you get going, you go. Okay. The more slowly you move, the harder it is. If you're kind of doing this, trying to make a little lines that connect that's going to be tricky it's not going to be smooth so yes you want to practice okay nice long using the very point of your bristles practice making lines first okay on a plate etc etc do one one piece at a time so i'm going to start i'm going to start with this one up on top and that thing swirls so my my deer's already dry i can put my finger my hand right up to it i'm going to bring this one it's going to curl up and go around like this so right in there, curls up, over, 
Okay? And yes, I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I hold my breath a little bit when I do it. It keeps me from shaking my hand. It keeps my hand from shaking, you know. If I breathe at the same time, I'll go <gasps> and go and then go the wrong way. Who knows? Now I'm gonna do this part up on top. Okay, keep your keep your hand close, tight, up against the canvas. I am switching brushes here. Again, if you guys happen to have a really skinny pen, black ink might help you a bit. grab my little special liner brush okay so this one right here has a little leaf that sticks out okay little leaf right there um let's see now i'm going to start on this one right here this long one that comes out actually no i'm going to do this one a little short one that curls goes over like this and curls just a little bit Okay. Now I've got this one's gonna come in between all of these. And it's gonna end up over here somewhere. Let's see. Here we go. I'm using my finger now. Put my finger up on the canvas, stabilizes my hand. Water, very important. This one has a little part that comes up and over. I'm gonna remove that little sequin. Get that, that guy out of there. I'm come over, let's see. I'm gonna start right in here. And it's going to come up. It's going to end up over here somewhere. As you can see, there's already a couple of differences between, um, between my antlers. I'm going to bring this one out a little further. How's that? So I can bring it over to the white part and do a little end over here. I think that'll be all on my antlers. Let's see. I could add another one here. It's going to get a little fancy on this one. Yes, these are tricky, folks. You want to practice a little bit. Then we're going to add, let's see. There you go, Danielle. Fantastic. Danielle says I had some glitter paint and sequins from when I was teaching. Never know I could use it like this. There you go. All right. So um, let's see. How should we finish this off? Mm, first, I'm going to add a couple of these little tiny branches right here, little tiny leaves. Little, I'll give you guys a close-up here in a moment. I know this is kind of far away. And if you don't have glitter or sequins, you can always add all of this later. Okay, the, 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 um, the glitter and the sequins is the final touch. So at any point, you guys pick some up. Just come back to the video, see how I did it. Follow along and you guys will be... All right. Actually, this I'm going to change it up a little. It's going to stick out like that. And here on the end, we have a little flower. A little tiny one. And a couple little leaves. Maybe over here we got a little part that comes out let's see what else what else what else a uh, little leaf right here all right so mine looks a little like this okay again practice a little bit 
those take a little practice if you don't have steady hand also your your brush selection is very important we're gonna add i'm gonna add a few little sequins on this one i had a little some little stars i don't have the stars star sequins with me at least i don't think i do let me see maybe i do i do not um but if i had those little stars those are cool but that's all right i don't have them i'm just gonna add some of the little regular sequins that i'm using take some glue i'll put some in here Take the sequin and whoop. just taking my the back of my brush, adding some glue, some glitter to the tip. Coming over and wherever I feel I'm gonna add a little sequin to. All right, there we go. I know, I didn't make a couple of those little star things. So like these little snowflakes, they're almost like little snowflakes. Make a couple of those just to vary things up a little bit. So like right in here. Practice makes perfect. <clears throat> and for whatever reason, you guys decide when you're all done at the end of all this, you want to come back and do it again, you can. Okay. Okay. Next thing I will do. Wow, it's 145, just like that. We got about we got about 10, 15 minutes to finish up. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glitter on this guy here. I'm not gonna have time to do the other ones. That's okay. Again, you already got the, you already got the, uh, the steps involved. What I could do is I could come in here and add another layer of paint right over the top to make this guy nice and uh, dark or darker, stand out a little bit more. But since I'm adding glitter over the top of it, I'm not gonna mess with that, especially to to be able to show you guys how this works. Now I'm taking my blue glitter. In this case, I'm using blue again, just a choice I'm making. Just taking it right out of the bottle. And this stuff here, this glitterific stuff is really thick. So it doesn't flow quite as well as the other ones, uh, the other, um, the other paints that I use, like the, the Twinkles, Craft Twinkles one. But it's really intense and there's different sizes of glitter inside the bottle. So it's kind of cool. Chunky, chunky glitter. Let's see what that looks like. Chunky glitter. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and kneel down in here, in here to get up close. In a second, I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna take a smaller one to get the edges of my deer, a little reindeer here. So again, folks, please don't forget, when you guys are all done, send me pictures. And I, ideally, if you can send them to me on my messenger, on Painting with Jesse, that's fantastic. It's easy for me to see them, keep track of them. If you guys start posting them on my, and I know sometimes I've asked you guys to do this, but it's harder to keep track of, of it when you post them somewhere else. If you post them like on this feed, etc., which you can, it's a little harder for me to keep track of them. I'd, I'd like to take them all in one big batch and then share them. Whoops. So 
so that everyone can see everyone's masterpieces. And then don't forget, <clears throat> tomorrow we got, <coughs> excuse me, Skellington Christmas. And we have uh, Charlie Brown next week, next Tuesday. So if you guys want to join us for that, that'd be fantastic. I have other events coming up before the end of the month. I just don't have them posted yet. I'm doing a really cool cardinal. Oh, somebody asked me yesterday <clears throat> during the comments, and I, I meant to get back. I think it was Leilani. don't know if you're on here, Leilani. She asked me if we were doing a uh, nativity scene one. <clears throat> nativity scene. And I don't think we're going to have time for that. That would be a really cool one. Christmas is right around the corner, but I do have some events planned. Some kid, a couple of, at least one more specifically kid-centric event before the end of the year. And then at least one more besides the Charlie Brown and uh, Skellington Christmas one coming up. At least one more of those uh, kind of all ages events coming up before the end of the year. <clears throat> but I'm likely going to try to squeeze in two. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Let me give you guys a close up. Yeah, I've got a really cool cardinal idea. I've actually got a cardinal painting that I did a few years back, <clears throat> a couple years ago against a snowy background with trees and stuff. I'm going to make a variation of that. But there you go. There's all that glitter on that reindeer. Again, folks, if you don't have glitter, you can add that anytime afterwards. There's the original. The chunky glitter I used on this is like the chunky glitter for the purple one there. Okay. The little one got some of the crystal glitter. So um, up to you guys. The very last two things, and I'm trying to make sure that I didn't forget anything. I often will forget something. Um, looks like I got it all. The very last thing I like to do, or, or second to last thing, I will sign my painting. So I always tell people, you know, you can sign. Typically, you'll sign in one of the corners. And you can sign it with your first name, your last name, your initials, your artistic name. So... Just gonna come over. This brush here is, an ide is not ideal for signing, but it's all right. Sign it with my last name. Then the very, the actual very last thing I would do for this painting is I would take this, I would flip it on its head, and then I would paint the top white. In this case, because my snow overlaps. I'm not going to do that now, but I, that's what I would do. I would take this, I'd paint the top, and I'd let this sit for a few minutes while it dries. Okay? Again, the edges are nice and painted. I would also clean this up right here. i clean up my sides, add more white paint there to match. Again, we don't need to do that, to do that right now, but that's how I would finish. Anyway, I just want to, uh, I'm not done yet. I'm going to talk about a couple things here in a moment. But again, if you're not done, I'm assuming a lot of you guys are still working on your deer. Don't worry about it. There's a lot of steps involved to this painting. It looks a lot more simple uh, when you look at the picture, but that's how painting works. It's about layering. It's about patience, um, working your steps little by little. Okay, so for those of you that are still working on it, <clears throat> no worries. Once again, this video will be available immediately after. I hit save and it goes up to the live tab up towards the top left. I think it's on the top left, but I'm not sure. Just look towards the top of the painting with Jesse, with Jesse Page and you'll see... Uh, this video there, you can click on it and paint along or continue wherever you left off. Go back to steps you might have missed, etc. Again, tomorrow we got this this guy right here. And now this is, we're going to be drawing all of this, drawing every step of this. But I do have stencils that you guys can use. Go to the event page. This one should be the one next one up because it's the one for tomorrow. Click in the comment section. And you'll see the stencils that I posted up. You can't save them to your phone or device or whatever to print them out. 
send me an email at painting with Jesse and you'll see I'll, I'll send you the PDF file for that uh, I got a stencil for Jack Skellington's head Sally's head part of her body <clears throat> and then the zero and uh, Santa okay so again this is tomorrow 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time time so the same time as today's event and then on Tuesday I don't remember the time on this one so you guys will have to check I think it's 3 p.m. Pacific time teaching you guys how to draw this by hand but again there's also stencils so go look at that and you'll get that information send me an email if you need the stencils for it if you can't download them I'm trying to minimize the amount of e emails that I get by making those stencils available through the comment section but if you guys need them I'm more than happy to send those out to you to send me an email and then once again, this information can be found in the description of this video, but I would greatly appreciate it for those of you that are able to. I have a virtual tip jar. You can help support the page by going to my Venmo, PayPal, or Zelle. Venmo and PayPal are at Painting with Jesse. Okay, you'll see a picture of me holding up a canvas on either one of these. The link for my PayPal and the information for this is all again in the description of the video, but Zelle is just my phone number. Okay, again, greatly appreciated for any of you that can and would like to help support the page. It's fantastic. You can also help by sharing the page. Sharing it on your Facebook. Whenever you post your picture, make sure you tag the page. That would be awesome. You can, um, if you want to stay on top of all the events that we do here, all the events that I post, you can do that by liking the page. Okay, liking the page. That way you get all the notifications. But all right, everyone, look at that. It is almost two o'clock. We painted quite a bit. <clears throat> I want to thank all you guys that are with me here. I really, really do appreciate it. You guys are amazing, especially for toughing it out. Sometimes things can get a little frustrating, and I absolutely understand that. But I'm happy that you guys are here with me, and um, I appreciate you joining me today. But all right, guys, <laughs> Caroline. Caroline Spencer says, I got to stop. I'm out of wine. Very important, Caroline. I hear you. I understand. I understand, you, you know, the pain. So go get your wine. Adrienne says, thanks for the lesson. This is my first, first class with you, and I enjoyed it very much. Thanks again. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to, do, to you, Adrienne. Thank you for joining in. For all of you that are new to the page, welcome. Thank you for being here. For all of you that have been coming back and uh, joining in again and again i really really appreciate you guys and uh just want to make sure that everybody sticks around stays tuned to the page because we do have a lot of really fun stuff 2021 is going to be pretty busy around here lots of really cool fun projects that i've already um, got working in my head working working those out in my head so be on the lookout for those again you want to like the page to make sure you get notifications all right but okay guys i'm looking at the comments section I uh, just want to, you know, I'm thinking of doing a new uh, a New Year's, guys. I'm thinking of doing a New Year's event. Not sure if on the 31st, New Year's Eve, midnight, I don't know yet. Uh, on the 1st, um, maybe we do something here where we all celebrate New Year's together. What do you guys think? Yay, nay? Angela Cash said, would you paint something for New Year's? Maybe a champagne class, etc. Yeah, we definitely do something like that. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Um, Maybe we can we can all hang out and celebrate together. Melissa, you are very welcome. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for being here. All right. 2021, yeah, we need a better 2021. That would be fantastic. Karen Roberts, yep, you can definitely watch the video later. New Year's Eve, New Year's. So yes, yes on New Year's. <laughs> All right, guys, looks like a lot of you are saying yes. I have my grandkids. They would love to paint, says Justina. I know, right, Melissa? Not like we're going to be partying anywhere. Yeah, I know, I know. Things are pretty limited. So maybe we'll uh, we'll do it together. 2020 stinks, stink, stink. <laughs> That's right, Izzy. All right, Penny. Okay, everyone, thank you all once again. I will talk to you all very soon. Please don't forget to send me pictures of your masterpieces. I can't wait to see what you guys have all created with me today. Okay, talk to you guys all soon. Have, a, have an awesome rest of your Saturday and of your weekend. Bye-bye.